Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome. I'm really, really happy you guys are here. We have got a great guest today. Um, I'm just fixing a little sound issue on my end. Please give me one second to uh, fix the sound issue that is popping up on my computer. It's always something, isn't it? It's always something with the technical issues. This is on my end. This is not your end. Hang on, hang on, hang on. My bad entirely. Oh, goodness. What's happened is I have the stream pulled up in another browser window, and I'm trying to figure out which one exactly it is. This is like YouTuber 101. All right. I think I got it now. We're good. We're good. My sound issue is gone. Yay. All right. So guys, we do have a, an amazing stream here today. I'm really excited to be uh, bringing you this stream. Listen, we've had quite a day. We've had quite a day. And uh, I know I'm getting asked questions about it in the chat. This is not related to our stream, but I will say that I am um, I am thinking about streaming that Kanye interview later on tonight. I do have a poll in the chat right now. If you would like me to do that Kanye interview, just let me know in the chat and we will maybe be able to make that happen. But of course, today we are here to work on, well, what has been an ongoing, uh, on ongoing topical coverage that I have been doing regarding all of the drama well it started with the drama between tim pool and adam Krigler. and i gotta be honest it started as a little bit of a gag it did i was feeling a little gossipy a little saucy and that was the original reason that i started covering this and talking about why adam really got fired from timcast i'm gonna be honest i maybe wasn't uh performing at my highest self when i did that but um after I did my video about it, uh, Ben, who we're going to speak to today, reached out to me. He said, I work for Tim Pool, and you were right with what you said, and there's a lot going on. And Ben and I have been talking for a couple weeks now about his experiences um, working for Tim. And I have to tell you guys, listen, I'm not, I really want to preface this. I do not want to destroy Tim. That is not the purpose of this. I actually, believe it or not, want Tim to be successful. I think that when Tim is successful, we're, we're all successful. Tim, I think, is extraordinarily good at waking people up. And as someone who left the Democratic Party after being a Democrat for 20 years, had my own very public red pill experience, I have a deep and profound respect for the necessity of waking people up. I think it's really, really important. And so I am not out to destroy Tim by any stretch of the imagination. However, there are some things that Tim is doing that are not good. And I am an industrial organizational psychologist. That is where I've spent the last decade of my life. And the reason I became an industrial organizational psychologist was to fix toxic work environments. I did my dissertation about workplace bullying. I studied, studied workplace bullying for years. I have coached people, countless people who have been the target of workplace bullying. I know toxic work environments when I encounter them. And I have now spoken to several people that, that have told me that Tim is not well running the most friendly of work environments. And I think it's important to talk about this. And my hope for today's stream is is that maybe it will allow Tim to do some reflection. He will hire an executive coach of some sort, and he will make his environment better for everyone. Because I think what Tim has not yet wrapped his head around is the idea that if he really wants to be, if he wants to create a media empire, he can't do that on his own. He's going to need people around to help him. And if he's treating his people the way that I've been hearing about for the last couple of weeks now, that's not going to happen. Tim is not going to be as successful as he could be until he fixes some problems that exist in his organization. And so we're going to talk about that today. And we're going to talk about Ben's experience. And he's going to be able to tell you in his own words what it's like to work there. He doesn't hate Tim either. And um, I'm sure he'll be able to speak to that when I bring him on. But just a couple things before we get started, guys. A couple, a uh, couple quick rules. Now, 
those of you who are regulars on my channel know this, but I do not have an unmoderated chat. I am not Tim Pool. I am not Adam Krigler. I am not any of these people. You cannot just say whatever you want to in my chat because I want to keep the environment nice for everyone. I have two simple rules that I would ask you to follow if you're going to participate. Number one, don't be a dick. What does that mean? You will not insult me. You will not insult my guest and you will not insult other people in the chat. Really, really simple. My guest is putting himself out here today to come on the show and talk to us. And I will not have people insulting him as he's doing so. All right. So just don't be a dick. Number two, no whining. I don't want to hear complaining. I don't want to hear, Carlin, why are you talking about this again? I don't want to hear any of it. If I ask you to stop doing something, just stop doing it. It's really not that hard. Don't be a dick. No whining. If you can't follow those simple rules, then you might end up on a, a little temporary block or you might end up getting banned entirely. And it's going to be your own fault because all I'm asking for is basic human civility. That's it. We're going to keep this nice for everyone. All right. A couple of quick announcements before we get started. Now, if you would like to ask our guest a question, let me just get this up. Here we go. If you would like to ask our guest, guest a question here today, you got a couple ways that you can do it. Number one is I do have a post that is in my locals community, kb.locals.com, in which my locals community has been posting questions that they would like, uh, that they would like Ben to answer. And you are welcome to post on that. I have pinned the the uh, link to the post at the top of the chat so you can find it easily, but it is also pinned right at the top of the community. If you want to go in there, just leave a question in the replies and I may end up asking it. The other way that you can ask a question here today is by sending in a super chat. Ben is being very generous with us. He's giving us a lot of his time here today. And so he is absolutely willing to uh, stick around and answer your questions. There might be some things he doesn't want to talk about, and we want to be respectful if he says, I'm not willing to speak to that right now. I know he's not going to give away any of Tim's business secrets. That's not what this is about. Um, and so uh, he may respectfully decline some of your questions, but I do know he is very answer, uh, open to answering questions if you guys ask them. So please super chat them in or post them on the post in Locals. And those are the two ways that I'm going to be taking questions today just to keep everything nice. Now, in order to post to my Locals, you are going to have to become a supporter in my community because that's just the way Locals works. Now, the benefits that you're going to get by being a supporter in my community is that we do two uh, completely unrecorded, totally private Zoom calls every single week. I spend eight to 10 hours a week on private unrecorded calls with my community members every week. My community is amazing. You guys are just going to love them. They keep me sane. They keep each other sane. Um, and that's why we do those calls. But we're also doing some cool stuff coming up this weekend. Number one, because of course, I never like to be controversial. So we're reading the Unabomber Manifesto this weekend, and we're having a book club on Saturday uh, to talk about it. We're doing that at 3 p.m. Still plenty of time to read it because it's it's really not that long. You can find it free on the internet. So you can download the Unabomber Manifesto and come have a discussion about it with us on Saturday. And then on Sunday in my supporter Discord, which you get access to by becoming a member of my locals, my Patreon, or by becoming a member on the YouTube channel, we are going to be having movie night at 8 p.m. on Sunday. We are going to be watching Fahrenheit 451, the original, not the crappy HBO remake. Uh, so you can come and join us there. And those are some other benefits you get for, uh, for being part of my community. One last announcement before we get started. I know that many of you are familiar with Lisa Poole. Lisa is in the chat here today, I believe. But Lisa just posted this video the other day about her experiences with watching her brother change. Um, her brother obviously is Tim, the guy, the, the man of the hour, as it were. And so Lisa was very brave and posted this video talking about the changes that she's seen in Tim. I want to encourage all of you to go and subscribe to Lisa's channels. Um, I've got them linked in the description below. Lisa has her main channel, which is just her name. She also has, I mean, a little bit of a saucy channel, a little bit racy, but I think it's kind of fun. She's got another channel called Stripper Tales and Cocktails. Um, if you want to give that a look, uh, she's talking about what it's like to be a stripper, um, which, you know, I mean, listen, man, I have no judgment here. Whatever's clever. And I think it's a really fun idea and she has fun with it. So, so check that out if you want to. Both her channels are linked in the description below. And some of you, when I, when I was, uh, sharing Lisa's video just the other day, you asked if she had a cash app or something that you could donate to, to help give her kids like a really nice Christmas. And she didn't at the time, but she does now. So if you would like to donate to Lisa, um, 
for, for to give her kids a really great Christmas. You can do that through Cash App. I've also put it in the description below if you want to donate there to help her out. I know that she really appreciates it. Um, and I know that like it's not always comfortable asking for help when you need it, but I know that some of you asked. And so if you want to uh, if you want to make a donation, you are more than welcome to do that. All right. That's all I have. Are you guys ready for the main event? Are you guys ready to talk to Ben? Um, go ahead and uh, mount that like button for me, guys. We do not smash the like button on my channel. We mount the like button on the channel. Um, I got a super chat coming in from Bree. Bree says, you should reach out to Seamus. One minute he was a regular on Tim's show. The next he was gone. Seamus is not my particular cup of tea, if I'm honest, but he is welcome to reach out to me if he wants to. Um, I'm pretty easy to get in touch with. I do have open DMs. And so anyone is, is welcome to DM me just like Ben did. Um, and so let's, let's, let's get started, guys. We're going to bring on the man of the hour himself, Ben Nathaniel. Hey oh, there. Ben. <laughs> it's good to see you again, Carolyn. It, it's good to see you too. Thank you so much for joining me here. Just making one tweet. Oh, it's okay. Twitter there always takes priority over. It took a while to find the emoji I wanted. Um, <laughs> you know, on happen. on the Seamus thing, I think it's kind of kind of sad that that guy was a good friend. He really yeah. was, and his girlfriend. And he's very pure of mind and of spirit. And I think that what's going on right now is it's just a little bit too much for him to want to be involved in, and he wants to wait for it to blow over. He's he's engaged. He went through a lot of stuff in his life. And I know he's still Tim's friend through all of this and he always will be. That's, and that's so. really good. And, you know, one of the things that, you know, one of the things that I've, I've really appreciated in terms of talking to you and, and others that I've spoken to in the past couple of weeks. And um, I really just want to emphasize this point. You're not here to destroy Tim. And I think that no one who has been speaking to me wants to hurt Tim. And I think that this is a really important point that people understand, you know, everyone that I've talked to, you guys all love Tim in some respects. We do. Yeah. That's why we joined him in his, this, um, the mission. Like we thought we were going to change the world. And in some ways we are, cause look what Kanye did. I mean, yeah. if that's not startling, I don't know what is you know, breaking news all the way. Oh he must God. have had a spicy love life. That's all I can say. There might be a clothing line coming out from all this. <laughs> Wait and see. Wait Maybe. And see. Maybe, but I want to just I haven't seen it yet. Oh gosh, well, it, it's I haven't even in. seen the full Tim one. I, I saw until he walked off, yeah, and then I just I called Lisa immediately and I said, This is a pretty serious matter, like people could be in danger. Yeah, that's all I did. Yeah, and we talked for a good time. So she got the video out the next day. Yeah, no, and I was really glad that Lisa got that video out. But let's 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 refocus, let's let's start it, let's start at the start, which is um. Well, a very good place to start. So, um, I kind like. Why did yeah. you reach out to me to talk? Do you want to share a little bit about your thought process behind that? Yeah. Okay. So, all right. One other thing before we go into anything, I want to shout out to four people. I would not be able to be here today in front of you all if not for these four friends I had in my life. It's Colonel Arneman and Sergeant Ostroff. I went to ROTC in a public uh, high school for three years, and they were like the best mentors I had at that that age. And shout out to Blaine and Alex. If you ever see this, guys, you were the, the strongest people I had in my life for a very long time. And I hope we can reconnect someday. Okay, so why? So you said, why did I reach out to you? Yeah, why me? <laughs> Honestly, this is what sucks. And this is what's so sad about it. I've... Um, you were the only person actually trying to do this properly. I um, I spent a long time for months, like seven months, going over going over different journalistic outlets and reporters and people people throwing in front of me and uh, phone numbers to anonymous people who were say in hiding more or less. Um, I don't know how to put it, but there's a lot of people that went in front of my desk like on a week to week basis that wanted me to tell the story. And I decided that until I had some level of trust that the person was really a professional and that they really had some sound psychological training, or just at least understood this, you know, narcissistic personality dis disorder, other factors, stuff that's unconscious that it's hard to diagnose, especially on like a, a camera, because a camera is only one sense, what's well, two senses, sight and, and hearing. You can't, really interpret that much data through something like a, a blog experience. So I reached out to you because I thought you were 
the best I had found so far. And the more I looked, the more I was um, confident in that. Well, I, I just, do. I'm I sad do. about that. I mean, I'm trying, you know. Yeah. Not meaning to stoke your ego. It's just, it's a disaster. YouTube no. is a fucking disaster. No, I mean, I think it, it, it is really hard. And I think one of the things <laughs> that has been, you yeah. know, frustrating for me about this <sighs> is, is how I, you know, I think a lot of people would have used you if you had reached out to them. Oh uh, yeah, I had a lot of people warn me about that. Yeah, and and I mean we talked for for a couple of weeks and and this was and I I want to make two and a half maybe. Yeah, I mean and, I don't and, remember. It was 6 days after your video dropped. I know that yeah. because on my thing it said 6 days ago. Exactly. And and you know you're you know one of the reasons and I didn't even try to push you to do this or anything. You want no. to tell the story. Yeah. Um and you're uh, very respectful. Yeah, I and I and I think that that's important. I didn't want to force anyone like you know like I said like you know when pe when people come out of environments like this, it's this is not my story to tell. It's your story to tell. But I do think it's important, and I do I do really appreciate your willingness to to do this. Yeah, I mean one clarification on that. It's not my story. It's everyone who is in Tim's life and trying to help the man succeed and grow. And there's a lot of people on that list. Some of them are no longer with him. Some of them are still in his life, but very much estranged. And there's kind of a no contact situation. And to be honest, it's all the people who were surrounding Tim and trying to help him grow as a person and as a, as a media, you know, Mm -hmm. company they were trying to help him become the best possible tim timothy he could be i like using his full name because he's he's got a lot of talent mm -hmm. he does how did you come to work for tim that is a very very long and <laughs> it's almost too much story than we have time for it. but um the short of it is so i um i don't come from a traditional technical background i actually got my training in finance and banking um, about 15 years ago, I went to university. I'm from Louisiana. I'm actually in Louisiana right now. And I went to university and studied finance and economics. That was not my first choice. I actually went there as a music major. And I ended up switching my majors a bunch of times because family has concerns about that. I mean, look at Ian. He's doing amazing now. So I'm glad you didn't listen to any, what anyone said, Ian. You know, remember that. But I ended up going through four years of, in, of university, switching around, trying to do entrepreneurship, but they had no program. You would have to go to Babson College or something, you know. And I ended up graduating in 2011, May 2011, on May 20th. And I thought I had the whole like world figured out. I had a great career in life ahead of me, and everything seemed magical. So next thing I know, I completely have a breakdown. I ended up hitting rock bottom by, I want to say about December of 2011. And so I had a complete shift in consciousness where I couldn't go back to having the persona of being this like finance guy or banking guy or in, working in the business realm in general is a very competitive cutthroat environment. And I wanted to do that. And so I realized what was really going on in this country and to be honest, around the world, because you saw this process of upheavals and you know civil um, unrest spread from America to England to it went all the way up to the whole Middle East, and the whole world got involved in flames mm -hmm. in the couple of years after. And so I I distinctly remember. So if Occupy Wall Street was 2008, right, and Bitcoin comes out the year after 2009, was it 09? Because Satoshi wrote his famous Genesis block. That you know the world's on fire, and the and the um, mm -hmm. the British Central Bank issues this statement or something. It's like a media. He took a screenshot of the newspaper, and I didn't find out about. I heard about Bitcoin the whole time during Occupied, but I didn't find out about it until until 2012 because I read a book named called Minimalist Business by uh, this guy Ev Bode, uh, Bogue, interesting guy. So anyway, the re reason this is important is if I go back in time to 2008 nine in 10 i was in sitting in financial management courses and basically business cycles in institutional finance and learning about the progression of these cycles where they spiral down they have different things you can have inflation and unemployment spiraling up like it did in the 80s and things can get really out of hand the whole economy can collapse right. to nothing and people could be unemployed starving and just 
absolutely Mad Max environment. And the next thing you know, there's going to be a war, World War One, World War Two. It's always this progression. There's always first a economic collapse, and then there is the recovery process where the nation heals, or the society heals, or Western Europe heals, and Eastern Europe does this. And so I was, I remember having like dial up internet on a really cheap um, e-machines computer in my bedroom at my grandmother's house. And I start researching about Occupy and what is all this stuff and people are getting tear gassed in the face in um, Central Park. And there's all these things happening. And then the more I look, the more it doesn't make any sense to my, my logical brain until I come across somebody named Timothy Poole. And I think the first time I ever saw him was on liveleaks.tv or one of these sites that had like a red, like a red design. And he was filming one of the protests and people were like charging at the police with their barricades and there's tear gas going everywhere. And there's a low res like 480p or something. And this kid, I didn't know anything about him for years until 2019. But this kid was capturing it all on the technology that existed at the time and streaming it out to millions of people. And I didn't, I remember this in the last couple of weeks when I was thinking back in time that Tim had made basically, he hit the front page news. He pointed that out in his own response stream to Adam. And I remember that event now. I have a lot of amnesia, but I distinctly remember the news. Yeah, so that's the beginning. Um, I connected with someone you might know. He's a very, very talented co-host and his name is Ian Crossland. And I got to meet that wonderful man. And I wanna say between November and December of 2011, and he, he roped me into his life almost like he was a long lost brother. Hmm. And I got involved in Minds and that might have to be a story for another stream. But from Minds, we ended up there's a lot like how much detail do you want <laughs> no nah, well i mean so 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 essentially i'll so give you a lot more than that well no that's i, mean, I think that's yeah. good for right now so like you you met ian and you went to work for mines, when I and, and how grew. did that translate into no 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 i didn't work for mines like this is oh. what happened um there was a facebook group it was called the gathering of the mines i met a guy oh. Named Matthew Dos Santos. Matt, if you're still in Brazil, I know you are, but you know if you're still kicking, um, please come back home. We really want you here. We're trying to do something. But um, I, I met, I met Ian Crossland through a through this guy named Matthews on this group. I was actually interested in his girlfriend, and for some reason, I ended up following him. And he was posting links about this thing called the Gathering of the Minds. And then there's another um, website associated with that called. Um, exposing the truth dot dot info exposing the truth dot info look it up in archives.org it exists it used to exist bill used to be a part owner in that site and he ran for like five years the, the um the gathering of the minds facebook community and then so i meet this guy i see this guy posting all his stuff in the group and his name's ian crossland he looks like a hippie, but well, no, he looks like a hippie later. He looks like just a really interesting, sincere guy um, who has a lot to say about a lot of topics and it's very interesting to me. Um, I ended up finding his YouTube channel from mm -hmm. the Minds group. And then I went through and like watched almost all of his videos. I mean, at some point I got, like I understood him. I started skipping around, but I was going through his whole history and just it was just mind blowing to me how much he taught, he was teaching people. He was teaching people things that they were not gonna find anywhere else. And he was doing it almost like it was just coming to him. I felt like that because I didn't know anything about the man other than he had a YouTube because I saw him posting, saw he had a YouTube. I went and found his YouTube. And then after that, I went back to his main Facebook profile. And I just started contacting him and I messaged him. Mm -hmm. And boy, did he get back. <laughs> and yeah. he was the one that that got you into, into working for Tim. How did that happen? Yes, yeah, all right. So. Um, Maybe two months go by, three months. I think it's February 2012. I end up moving to another um, another place. Um, and Ian says, hey, there's somebody I really want you to meet. I think, um, I think you'd really like him. And he's a very intelligent and dedicated young man, and he's trying to change the world. That's literally kind of the type of speech that Ian gave me. And his name was Bill Ottman. 
Mm -hmm. And so Bill Ottman, Bill, if you ever see this, you know, <laughs> thank you. Thank you for so much that you've done for me and for lots of people. You know, you've helped a lot of people in this, this whole journey. So Bill Ottman um, meets me on like a Skype or some type of video session. I think it was Skype because that's all we had back then. And um, he says, hey, man, um, and he just kind of like tells me everything. So I'm trying to make this company and, you know, I need help. And there's only like three of us. There was Ian Crossland, Bill Ottman, and a programmer in the UK named Mark Harding, who was their CTO for a very long time. I think he still is. I don't know much about them right now, but I think so. And, um, and Bill said, hey, um, do you want a job? And so I, uh, it's kind of complicated because I had my own startup, which was just in the process of failing. <laughs> and That's it was with my right? cousin and my cousin was going, he was um, going to law school and his roommate was going to law school too. And they both wanted to be JDs with a falling out with each other because they wanted to give me a bigger percentage. I mean, they wanted me to give um, the roommate a bigger percentage because he had some money to invest. He had played with penny stocks and a bunch of other things. It's literally fear and living in Las Vegas then. <sighs> It's a lot. But so I say, you know what? I don't really have anything going on in my life. Um, I just had a massive falling out with my cousin. And he's like, you know, the grass is greener. It really is. It's greener on the other side. And he said, hey, do you want to work for me? And so I said, yes. And he said, well, we're just going to, all right, let's make it happen. We're just going to send over a couple documents to sign. And he sent over the Minds NDA, which was like maybe two and a half paragraphs. And it was super simple, super concrete made logical sense. Even though I went through business school, I had two semesters of business law. I understood it. I said, I know what I'm getting into. I know that I own my rights and that he owns what he has created and brought into reality. And so I really like the guy. And so the next thing I know, um, I have technically a job. It's more like an internship or just to see if I can do it. And I meet their guy, Mark. And Mark was a really talented, very young. He's a lot younger than me. Extremely um, talented guy. And um, they get me working on a part of the site to do with uh, the search engine, making a search. Uh, at the time, I knew about Elasticsearch and Apache Solar and stuff, yeah. but I was not a really good coder. I did not have the background because I was fresh out of college and I never took any of this stuff. I didn't really know what I was doing. And so Mark would say, hey, can you do this? And, and they shared me their GitHub stuff. And I um, had all this, and he had the whole code base. It's based on something called Elk. And, um, once I got involved, I said, oh, my God, I can't actually do this. I don't know how to basically finish the projects that Mark wants me to do because yeah. I did not understand object-oriented PHP. I knew object oh, um, Java because I studied. I bought a book from China about Java is really cheap, and I studied OOP Java, but I didn't know PHP, and I was not skilled enough to do it. So I ended up not doing that, and we had a falling out because I got my uh, – my um, brother, not my brother, I got my um, my mom's boyfriend's son to get it to interview for them. And yeah. it ended up badly. And we didn't talk until 2018. So so how did you go from doing this to ending up working for Tim? Yeah. So Tim in 2018, 19, he knew that he needed to get a facility to be able to have a company where he could have a real news desk have real broadcasting capabilities and have a staff, a full-time staff of, of writers, reporters, video editors, all the people it takes to make broadcasting a reality. Taking events that happen live in the world in real time, they feed into, into this place and they're processed by the people there and they come out in news segments. And it's a very, very complex job to do. And so, so, Tim was trying to rent a place in Norwalk, Connecticut, where Bill Ottman had grown up at. It's called the Palace Theater on, um, I think it's 29 Main Street or something. I just don't remember. But it was a very, very old, dusty, kind of fallen apart building. And there was just no way to make Tim Cass work at that property. So Tim was there and out and he had a lease for a short while. And then he didn't like the environment. And I don't know if it was personal reasons or not, but he ended up having deciding he needed to buy a house instead. He was not gonna use an office building, which to be clear right now, our rent was 22,000 a month and utilities were up to seven and 8,000. Wow. It was 25,000 square feet. Half of the building was converted into office space, which had network capabilities at a data center room. That's where most of my stuff took place. And it had a sound stage at all kinds of equipment. And there was a guy leading it called Brian Trisbeck and he's pretty much the main business guy. And so, um, Tim was there 
Bill had an office. Bill stayed on until sometime during COVID. I want to say March. No, like February, because I caught COVID in February and then Bill, Bill was out. And then Ian stayed till I think March. And then he, well, no, I'm going to let them clarify the timeline. I don't want to give things. That's all right. But I ended up going there on December 11, 2019. And I stayed until August 15 of uh, 2020. And I never saw Tim a single time because he was already out of the building and then searching for a house. He bought a house. He brought Adam back into um, Deptford, I think, Connecticut. Mm -hmm. De no, Deptford, New Jersey. Sorry. I don't know. I was yeah. Um, and they got a house and they get, got things started. And I never got to meet him. And I was sad. That's kind of sad because when we cleaned up the whole place, I would find business cards of his former associates in like the, the desk that I was cleaning up and making it, you know, presentable for the next renter. Right. So, so how did you end up like, so, so when did you go to work for him then? When did that happen? A year la later to the day. Mm -hmm. So Ian stayed in touch with me the whole time. And I want to say after I got home, he started sending me links. Like we didn't really talk a whole lot. We never really talked um, by voice except maybe one time or two times, but he would send me links to some of the streams he was in on IRL with his new, um, his new role as co-host. And he would say, hey, man, what do you think of this? Or what's your opinion on, well, no, he wouldn't say that. He'd say, well, what, like, check this out. And it's like, we were just talking about this tonight on the show. And it's, it'd be like something we're having a conversation about. And it's like, he would he'd send me um, links. And the first one I ever saw was the Project Veritas guy. What's his name? James O'Keefe. James O'Keefe was like the first or second link that, that, um, that Ian sent me. And I remember he, and I watched the whole thing and I got addicted. I got addicted to the show from the type of speeches that you know the guests would make he said if you he said essentially stand up to power and stop whining about it and you can change the world mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. he said that so, live in air so 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 what when you when you find when you eventually ended up working for tim what were kind of some of your first impressions like when you did eventually meet him um, this is where it's like, I don't want to step on toes, but mm -hmm. I'm here to try to be like a, a memory bank and to try to dump what I remember experiencing. So I fly in after a long talk about the whole situation, what it's going to be like. Um, I get airline tickets about three or four weeks in advance, and I'm going to leave on December 10 and come in um, and go straight to IOD, um, uh, Dulles. And so I go there and I get an Uber from, from Dulles to Harper's Ferry. Now, one thing to understand about this, when we talk about doxing and how much privacy is something that's really hard to do these days, I was under the impression that they were telling everyone they were in Wyoming or something. You know, we know that story and that the address was something really sensitive. And the understanding that I had at the time was that Tim was going to send a driver to come pick me up in Harper's Ferry, West Virginia. So I had the Uber deliver me in Harper's Ferry about an hour from DC. And, I, and then I text Ian. I say, Hey, can you send the driver? You know? And then Tim, uh, Ian said, Oh no, I, I'm going on the show right now. Um, can you just call the drive, you know, the Uber back? And, and then he sent me the actual address. So at that point in time, he did not like, I did not actually know the address of the house. Yeah. And so I ended up trying to, to wait and see if I could get, um, essentially an Uber like to, to come and they didn't come and it's getting darker and it's getting colder. And so I decided I'm just going to walk. <laughs> and I had two full suitcases, full of clothes and all kinds of stuff. So one other thing to understand is I was not going to be a full-time employee. I was meant to go there to fix an issue they had with their internet stream. They could not get their internet to function properly. And to be honest, it was installed incorrectly. And so I was only going there for two weeks and I had a, I had a flight um, plan that I was going to go to West Coast for a few months after that. And I was just going to go and make a thousand mm -hmm. bucks or something. Yeah. So, so when, so, so you ended up walking to, to I the walked, house. And I walked from Harper's Yeah. I, I don't, I think, I think they may have sent me the, um, oh yeah. So, yeah. All right. So they didn't send the address until I was there which was totally fine because I had like an understanding with Ian that it was like really important that they're protected because this is risky business. Mm 
you know, it really is. And so, so um, Ian sent me the address. I said, that's only four miles away. And it's like, mm, but I got to cross this river. I'm not from here. And, and so I walk and, you know, there's no um, shoulder on that road. So you have to walk on the side, which is right. pretty much a mountain. And I had right. two suitcases and it got dark. Right. And it took me quite a while, like an hour and a half to go oh, for wow. miles. And I used to jog and I used to like religiously exercise and ride bikes and stuff. It's a, that was the longest walk I've had in a long time. So, so I deleted you... the address off my phone <laughs> as so soon as I get you... there and like wipe it. Yeah. So when you when you eventually awesome. when when you eventually got there, like you you I assume met yeah. people that, yeah. that were living there. I was thinking and... last I was thinking last night. Um, like I was trying to remember who did I meet first, and what I remember is I walked up to the front door. They just had those little garden lights, where it's all kind of like a yellow hinted glow. It was not in the um the upstairs. I I think. I don't remember if I looked upstairs or not, but one thing to understand, um, if you ever see Tim's house from night, I don't know if there's any blogs or anything. Um, Brian posted something one time, we'll show it, but because yeah. he took a he took a um a time lapse of the sky. There was a there's a, a blue window with the LEDs around it, this blue, and the one right next to it in the attic area mm -hmm. or the third floor where you see um the studio is at, there's a blue window and a red window right next to each other. Hmm. And the whole rest of the house is is um and that's the only thing that's accented i know who did that mm -hmm. i think i know so, and so I, I knock on the door and someone a very nice young lady named tiffany tap opens it and lets me in and she says oh hey ben i heard about you and she's very soft-spoken really yeah. nice. and and who are some of the other people that, that there was I, at I the met. time there was um some of alex jones's entourage and i don't remember i remember he had several bodyguards like three guys big guys hefty with kind of almost you know like jackets like really thick material jackets in case they get in a scuffle with someone and then i remember rob do is like standing there i've watched alex jones since like 2010 and he like changed everything for me right like i was telling you at the beginning you know and so rob Dew's standing there and says hey man and it's like what's like who are you <laughs> and what's your story and so i got to meet rob do and i yeah we talked a little bit and he asked me all kinds of interesting things, including DMT stuff, stuff like Rogan. <laughs> That's another he's conversation saying, he's like, for another day. <laughs> hey, you want to watch the show? And um, he's like, yeah, it's like, absolutely, man. Yeah. And so I, um, so we lay on the bean bags. There's like three bean bags in front of the main, I think it was three bean bags in front of the main um, living room, the downstairs when you go in the front door on the left side. Um, and he turned on the, t and he had the TV on and Alex was on live with Tim and was like midway through the broadcast. I got there really late. It's midway through the broadcast and I just stare, I'm just watching and like, it's surreal. It was honestly surreal. And I'm watching Alex and Tim Poole, first time I've ever been in his presence in my entire life, live on air streaming out to a million people. I think that episode got a million. I think it was Michael Malice on that one. He was on the first one that got banned. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. So you showed up on one of the nights that Alex Jones was on and that was three your times that I know of. Yeah. Yeah. So, 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 uh, so, you know, I, I recall that you, you told me you met Adam that night. Okay. Yeah. This is, um, this is a, this is the thing. So, um, so Alex and Tim finish up. Um, they didn't have an after stream yet because the website wasn't set up. Right. Mm -hmm. So, Adam and Tim comes downstairs and everyone's like happy that they had a very successful stream. They didn't get D index or a strike. Um, the stream went normally and, and Tim was like happy and, and really like an optimistic spirit. He doesn't say much. He was very like, he talks to the guests, but like, you know what I mean? And so um, I, I, I first shake his hand and say, Hey man, I'm uh, my name's Benjamin. I'm here to solve problems. Said, <laughs> that's a nice way great. to introduce yourself yeah so yeah and and you yeah. met adam that night too yeah um so adam was not in the front area and i didn't really know about adam i had not really looked in the stream past the videos that ian was uh showing me and i'm not saying anything like about that just like i i was kind of busy <laughs> i didn't i didn't go into the yeah. history of the stream because yeah. i could have I did, I did like, I think see the other person who we now know as Adam Crickler, because, you know, but I was not familiar with any of this. Mm -hmm. And so the Tim ends up going to bed 
and we have a good talk. I talked to Alex a little bit, you know, he's super, he's a super gregarious character. He's really nice spirited. But then at some point, um, Andreas, uh, he's like, Hey, so glad you arrived. He comes to give me a that's okay. It's okay. It's all right. It's all right. Yeah. It's okay. I'm not going to say anything more about That's him. Okay. But yeah. I mean, it's already been broadcast. It's okay. It's yeah. all right. We can just keep going. We had we had characters picked out. There we'll are, have there some are, other character. It's okay. We don't we 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 don't need to we don't need to talk about Andreas directly okay. anymore. But, but right. so, so 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 you you met him. He gave you so, a hug, a nice warm welcome. And it says, "Hey, um, I want you to meet someone." And he says, "And I didn't know anything about the house and how it's laid out." So there's, you know, how would y'all know it? There's a separate zones for different areas and where different work gets done. He takes me through a double door and there's a laundry machine and and then you go through another door and there's a whole guest suite and it's like very like lavishly decorated and it's very meticulous and it's it looks different from the rest of the house. And to say it felt different is a complete and total understatement. Something about this area and it wasn't just like the temperature because it did have it had zone heating in this house every you could you'd have one place 100 degrees another place 76 you know but he takes me in and and uh i think adam i don't remember if he was sitting in his at his desk or talking to nishra or not but he ends up getting up and oh uh, hey and um he says and uh, him and andreas immediately kick it off and it's almost like honestly what I remember is it was like they were continuing a conversation they had before I arrived. So I think what happened is Andreas was already with him. He heard that I arrived. It was, you know, Facebook, whatever they use. We now have an intercom system. And then he came out to greet me and said, then, hey, and this was like after Alex had already left or it was, I think he had already left. So it was like 1030. No, it's like 1130 to 12 p.m. Um, 12 a.m. Sorry. And um, I meet Adam and he says, Hey, do you want to smoke a joint? Adam would never do that. He would never do that. He doesn't do anything at all. He would never know that would happen at all. No, it would never happen. All right, now I'm, I'm not, all right, so a little bit of context. I'm not entirely sure if Andreas said that or if Adam said, I'm going to get some whiskey. Uh, but that, well, they so, wanted to th indulge th in the were, vices things, of the day. Things, things were <laughs> said and, and things were consumed of some variety. And what did you guys talk about that night? What did um, he tell you? He is, he was in a very kind of like emotionless mood. I don't know how to really describe it. I can only remember, remember it. And it's, it's very triggering a little bit now, but he was instantly talking about some girl named Lydia. Lydia is Smith, right? She used to be Smith. She's now another name. And, um, you know, he basically, I don't remember how long I stayed in his, um, his and Nisha's area. And I, I don't remember what Nisha was saying. And they were both new people to me. And I never met them before in my life. I'd only seen Adam on that little screen. Um, and he basically ended up telling me about 30% or 20% or something. I, didn't, I don't even remember exactly how much. Because he's more or less in a conversation with, with Andreas. And I was just kind of like... Saying it, there. Interjecting. I was just hanging out, interjecting. We were having an interesting first um, introduction to each other. Yeah. yeah. Did Adam, I think like what, so what, what you told me not to put words in your mouth, but um, you told me that Adam. That that Lydia is such a effing. Yeah. And that, and he's like, I can't stand her. And, and he would, I didn't understand what it's about until he mentioned what happened that, you know, there's speculation on, well, if you don't have pictures, do you really have any proof? But that came from a place of honesty to me. Mm -hmm. I could see it. I could see his emotions were real. And he was really trying to just get out the thoughts he had because he had been kind of pushed away, but still with his friend, still supporting his best friend. And he was not able to really grow as an individual until he could resolve this trauma yeah. that happened. So let me let me see if I can that summarize. Was, was nice. Let me let me see if I can summarize kind of what what happened and then you can tell me if I've I've got it right or wrong. So yeah. basically so is like you show up. 
and the night you show up, Alex, yeah. this is like one of the Alex Jones shows. And so this is like a this really big deal. And I then, recorded the first one. Yeah. And then you you come in the house and and you you connect with Andreas and Adam. And Adam is and feeling as well. a little but a like, little down and yeah. probably like maybe feeling a little left out of uh, out of everything. The, 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 the most important show that Tim had done on his own channel. I mean, right. obviously Joe Rogan and um Jack Dorsey was a much bigger show, but in terms of something that he had the full creative control over, this is his most important moment. Yeah. And Adam was not there to be part of it. Exactly. So Adam, Adam is feeling a little bit upset about that. Yeah. And you, you run went, down like under the weather. Yeah. You know, emotions then, can cause disease. I think we can, I think we can understand that. And, um, and then, so you guys start talking and basically your yeah. first introduction to Adam is, is you're hanging out with them and he's basically this saying, is like Jersey Shore. F Lydia, Lydia's effing Tim, and and yes. that's, and that's why I got that's why I got fired was because oh. Lydia is effing Tim, and that is your first introduction yes. to Tim Cast. <laughs> Do I, I have said, that right? Yeah. <laughs> that's it. I said, what the hell? <laughs> what have I gotten into now? <laughs> it's like you know what? I'm kind of used to this. <laughs> It is what it is. Um, so, 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 so. I wish I had some whiskey. You know, I mean, it is what it oh, is. What yeah. it is. I just wanted to be clear about that because, you know, for my viewers, on the very first oh, night God. that Ben was there, Adam told Ben the exact same story that Adam Would told me two that? weeks after it happened. Honestly, I mean, wait. So, no, what day? What well, do you know when he told you? This was December 11, or um, so, so he told 20, me twenty twenty. Um, September, September. Oh, yeah, so you're before me. Yeah, you were before because yeah. it happened in yeah. August. He said August 12th. Yeah, I. Uh, he told me weeks after it happened, yeah. and so and so. I guess oh, like, the reason I'm really harping on this is I I want to validate not only that what I said two weeks before Adam was correct, but yeah. but, but but Adam has been very honest. Like you you've watched it really has? Adam. You, do you would you assess? Okay, I need to clarify this. Um, the viewers are going to have to cross reference my story with some of Adam's and Tim's because yeah. I could only watch this That's whole right. week has been really hard to um to get through, but not so not so much emotionally. It was just really processing this whole show. It's almost like a theater show going on on the internet. And so I didn't watch I only got a couple hours of sleep for the past ever since That's Thanksgiving. All right. And That's not all right. not only because of this, I had to do a lot of driving to pay bills. But um but with Adam, it's just oh, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> no, so I guess what I'm what I'm trying to say is that like so for what you've seen from Adam's stream, oh, yeah. he, he was he was yeah. truthful in what he said. I only watch up until he starts the um when he turns on the chat. I watched yeah. the whole thing up to that. And then I I did see a couple segments that other people like you made. Mm -hmm. Um hot takes. I I saw the hot takes. Um his entire stream up to where I stopped watching and said, well, you know, it's out there now. Yeah. His whole thing up to that turning on the chats when I just say, all right, you know, I know what I need to know. And um, it's very sad. And it's going to cause a lot of pain for the people involved. Um, everything that I listened to in his stream was accurate, except for one detail. Chris did not sue Tim. This story we can go into. Do you want to do that now? Well, yeah, let's let's so so my yeah. let me let me tell you what my perception of that is because I thought that Chris sued Tim as well. Everyone but then did. but then I remembered back. So Chris set up a go he was going to. to sue Tim. Chris he was going on the rounds. Him. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know so, I didn't know this until much later. So it's not as though it's not as though this is just an idea that's popped out of thin no. air. Like Chris was trying to They raise had a very bad disagreement yeah. over how to start a essentially multi-million dollar company because look at what Tim Cass has grown into now. It's an amazing, amazing property. If he wanted to, he could sell it one day for $10 billion. I'm not even kidding. Yeah, He really could, just the brand value. But the thing is, it's his, it's a personal brand. So it's, it's like they can't sell it as long as his name is tied to it. Right. Someone who would, you know what I mean? Yeah. He can't but, retire. He has to do this every single day until the revenue from outside of IRL or outside of the Tim part is sufficient. 
Right. But so in so far as, as the Chris situation goes, and I just want to I want to make sure this is clear yeah. for for the audience. Adam did not have, I think, enough of a connection to the well, real source to have a perfect thing. But Chris absolutely was going to sue his brother. He said in his GoFundMe, now you can read it, that he's like he's very poor. His brother's taking something from him. He needs to get it back. And it's a very nasty situation. And he's not able to do this alone. And so he made the stuff to reach out for help. Chris reached out to his community and the internet at large for help to get back, to get back his, both his um, property and his brother. And the father, I think we know who he is, but the father actually had to step in and get involved. Yeah. So, so basically Tim yeah. and, and Chris's dad stepped out. in to have a little, to have, have an intervention so that Chris yeah. didn't go through with yeah. seeing it. And, and then, right. and then eventually just, Chris ended up going to work for Tim. Yeah. They resolved it. They resolved their differences and it was a beautiful thing. All right. But, All but right. it was so close. It was on the razor's edge. It could have been nasty. I know yeah. what that's a lot. I remember I was saying about my cousins and I ben, still love that person. Ben, do you mind if I take a point of personal privilege of on my channel just for a second? Um, because I want to dispel another rumor while I have an audience here. Anything. And, I'll, and, I'll answer and, any questions I'll have. Excellent, excellent. So I want to, I want to, I want to show a chat, and this is, this is. I, I just need to take this yeah. moment. I'm sorry, this is completely selfish, but, but LK Wait, says. Very... So let's get this straight. So Carrie Smith is. Who out is here. Carrie Smith? Oh, we don't. She's a crazy. She is oh. a woman that has been smearing me for two yeah. years, and I just want to okay. like, basically go off your story here and say: so Carrie Smith is out there he accusing was. me of spreading yeah. the Tim and Lydia he was. and Adam was literally telling everyone what happened. Everyone he could that he didn't know what to do with his best friend, and I mean another thing I, I even skipped over. So, um, and this is really really important. Um, I think um, it wasn't just the first night. The next, I ended up crashing somewhere. I don't remember what I did. But the, over the next two nights, um, it seemed like everyone in the house liked to have campfires, especially because it's cold. And they just mm -hmm. like being outside. It's like nature. It's gorgeous out there. And we would have campfires where everyone would like hang around and just talk. Everyone that was living in the house, mm -hmm. except for Tim and Allison. Oh, and he told me, yeah, he told, we were all out there. We had chairs set up. People were drinking. Some people were smoking. Tim really, really had a no drug policy, but he just is like, if I don't see it, you know, fine yeah. type of thing. And I don't even remember Adam smoking anymore other than the one time. I have to clarify that. I don't it remember. That. Right. But I remember out of the campfire, I remember him saying something really, really puzzling to me. He said, you know, it's like he's like it's not even a real company it's it's the tim pool sex cult and he said like what am i doing and he said if he's like how do we change this to be what it was meant to be and that was like weird it was really weird because i said what the like you know what, what did I mean? he mean when he said the tim pool sex cult do you have any idea <laughs> I don't know, but we legitimately haven't talked about it, this, so I'm honestly asking. No, <laughs> it was just at a campfire. What happens? There's everyone out there, and then most of the people go to sleep, and it's just Adam and Nishra and me and maybe one person. Yeah. And he said, you know, it's like it's a cult. He's like, it's not right, or it's not what it used to be, or it's not, it's not my friend. Like my friend is not th this. This is not what he's like, and it's like something has kind of shaped him and kind of changed his personality, and he's not who he was even you know, half a year ago. And it was just very sad. Yeah. It's very sad coming in upon all the drama. So, so what were, what were some of your experiences with Tim? Do you mind sharing any? <sighs> yeah. Yeah, of course. Um, the, what Adam said about Tim blowing up on people, that's all true. Um, but the thing about Tim is he will be the nicest, most loving like warm hearted person you've ever met in your life until, until something happened that really makes him afraid or just really is unexpected and he doesn't know how to process it. It's only moments like that, that he will freak out. And he did it to a lot, a lot of people in that house. Mm -hmm. And he did, he did it to me three times. And the thing about me is I realized why he was doing it. I kind of understood the root causes. And I just, at some point I, I said, you know what, I'm not going to, um, I'm not going to trigger it. I'm going to be as 
step as careful as I carefully as I can, like I'm walking on eggshells or everyone is. And, you know, I'm just going to try to be his friend. And that's, that was, I think the hard part is I knew he needed help. I knew he really needed help and he didn't know who to, you know, who to go to. And he was in such a complex situation. He really was. Mm-hmm. And it was so, sad. You, so you said there, I think that, that one day and then out of nowhere, like he'll blow up on someone and then we'll go back to being happy again. What are some of the things that might trigger Tim to blow up? Mistakes. Mistakes. Anything that he felt like could jeopardize the trajectory of his business and his plans. You have to understand about people. I think Tim's an INTJ. I'm an INTJ. And they plan in very long-term cycles that can take years to even decades. That's just how some of them think. And I think that Tim has a very much a solid roadmap of he's here at this dot on the map and he wants to get all the way over there to another continent, like in terms of his, his ability to impact the world and to, to shape the world and to try to get good outcomes from people. And so he's here, you have all the stuff you got to go through and employees have to make that journey happen. And so there's all these people that he's bringing in and surrounding himself with that have to do the work that he can do so that he can focus on getting the news out, talking to guests and being the best person live on air for that three to four hour window that he possibly can, as well as do all the news segments, another news segment, have you know multiple channels and then still do a blog. So he had all these people so that he could do the work and actually grow a real company. And so if those people made a mistake, they would they would hear about they it. Would what, get what, the fire what, what and the fury happen? pretty much instantly. <laughs> what do you, what do you mean that they would get the fire and the fury? What did that look like his, exactly? His tone would change. His like he would almost be like rapid fashion I- examining every piece of information in the room, everything, whether it's his sister standing right next to him or something not working right, whether it's like a coffee machine, which that never happened, or something more critical to the operations. And he would try to figure out as fast as possible, as quick as possible, what the solution is, what really happened, and try to get to the bottom of it so that he could just just get back to his day and just go back to his, his part of his zone and try to finish his task that he has essentially laid out. He has a very rigid time slot. He would go to sleep at 11.30 p.m. every single night and wake up at six or seven. Or, or five or I don't know that that's what he would tell guests and I know it's true but I would know because the times I'd be called in his office would be like at the latest 6 30 if there was a problem with to the right. computers or something so if someone made a mistake somewhere along there was the way no time, would, there was, there no, was time. no time to sit down and really talk it out and deal with it mm-hmm. and there was nobody else in the house except for one person who could actually do that and really get to the bottom of things that would go wrong. So what are some of the things that Tim might blow up for? Can we get some examples of like some situations? Um, yeah, taking involved? taking pictures of things that are meant to be private, like whether it's to do with numbers or passcodes or, on, or anything like that. Um, if you go to what's considered to be a confidential or secure location and you have cameras and there's a lot of trust with the person you're visiting, um, and if the cameraman films some part of the property that he's not supposed to, and I'm talking about a road trip specifically in this yeah. story. If that cameraman were to film that and it's very, very sensitive, Tim can't have it. It's dangerous to Tim. It can really derail this whole train. And so the cameraman would get, I don't want to say attacked, but he would get really verbally abused for like a brief moment of time, up to five minutes, six minutes, whatever. And then Tim would just kind of like calm down, walk back off and, you know, back off and then go back to his schedule. And, you know, I mean, mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's essentially symptoms of a, of an environment in which you're losing control of, or you perceive, I don't believe you really have lost any control, but in this type of situation, it's like you perceive that you you're losing control of some variable in this master complex equation of everything has to go right everything or the rocket misses the moon. 
was there any training or anything for for like you know people who might be new to for Tim to say okay here are the absolute you will not do this or here here like here here are your guardrails to um, say you don't do you do do this you don't do that before uh, they would just get blown up at the, Tim pretty much everyone that Tim brought into the company was a professional that had an extremely good career before this. Almost everyone. One of the f notable exceptions to that was uh, someone, someone we all know from Lisa's stream, mm -hmm. you know. And there were a couple other people. He didn't blow up at everyone too. It seemed like the skaters. He didn't really blow up on them as much. Um, it would be various people, and it would just be really. You couldn't really predict it, but you would know when it was happening because he would. You could hear him yelling from the other floor of the house. Sometimes, not always. Sometimes he would, you would not, you know, it wouldn't go that bad. It would just depend on the severity of the mistake. Um, when I first arrived there, what I said, the person who let me in the door, he would, he would blow up on her sometimes just for not really being on. Now, the thing is, that was actually, I, I don't want to say it's her fault, but in a way it was kind of her fault for not putting in what he thought was adequate effort or something yeah. or talking to her boyfriend. Um, and then he said, it's just Tiff, you know, Tiffany. And then she would run downstairs. What, what is it, Tim? What the, what's going on? Why, what's the emergency? And she'd be all startled. And like, she was super soft-spoken when I met her. And now it's like, I felt like that had a lot to do with it. Mm -hmm. But I didn't get to know her before Tim passed. You know? yeah. I'm sure so, she's doing a lot better. And, In and fact, Tim is really good about people who's employing, um, she's, he's employing her uh, boyfriend to make cartoons. He's extremely yeah. talented. I mean, I think, you know, one of the things that's striking to me is, and, and I just, I want to make sure there's a, there's a fine point on this is that, um, if, if you're working for someone and you are afraid to, to speak up or afraid that any misstep yeah. might get you screamed at by your boss loud enough to where people on different well, floors. It's, of the it's almost like a shaming thing. I mean, it's, it's, yeah. he's in his, what, what his thought process is, is I need to get to this get this solved as quick as possible, get the resolution, get it out the door and package, and then go about my day so that we can make the deadline of having the show and never missing a single beat. They never, I, I think the whole time we were there, we never missed a single show, mm -hmm. like ever. We almost missed one on his birthday. If, you know, there's a story behind that. And we almost also missed one one time when there's a storm and the power went out and we had to grab generators and there was no gas because the gas pumps weren't working because the whole state was out of power and we had to drive across state lines. But the now, show went on. Now, Lisa mentioned in the chat something about Tim's socks and Tim oh, blowing God. up on people because of socks. Oh what is what is going on? Oh, with the all socks? right. Um, I don't know. I don't really know. I, I used to have this um, thought that like if you had so much money that you could buy clothes like every day. Like why even wash clothes? Mm -hmm. So yeah. there would be a lot of socks around the house. They'd be there and then they wouldn't, they'd be over there and then they wouldn't. And then there'd be a whole box of them underneath the skate ramp. And it's like, they had never been opened. Like he would have boxes of clothing that had never been opened, never been used in different locations in the house. So, <laughs> so Tim just like bought new clothes and like, like would, yeah. clothes when I was at the palace theater the one time, there's a package of like um, clothing there and and like it had sat there for seven months and drives said, hey why don't you you know open it he's not gonna come back i did and so it's kind of weird <laughs> <laughs> but um he was just a man trying to get things done as efficiently as possible and i don't think he ever thought that that would like that's a minor thing but someone had to clean up that and so you know <laughs> so the sock story is a real thing that really happened yeah, and but it wasn't that severe. I mean, but it happened two or three times. He yelled at people for, you know, misplacing his socks or taking the socks when he left them. He knows he has perfect memory. He knows exactly where everything is. So if it's, he goes back the next day and it's not there, he's like, "Somebody moved them." Yeah. yeah. You know? Let me let me just I understand. Uh, but yeah. Let me just take a couple of these super chats real quick. You got a couple of, of them, and this is this is not related to you, but uh, Chris Baker, thank you for the super chat. Chat thank dedicated you. Thank to Christine you, McVie and Irene. Thank you, Chris. And uh, Mind Fury says Ben's description of Tim Pool reminds me precisely of how Steve well, Jobs all the greats are. to have treated Apple's uh, yeah. treated employees at Apple demands perfection, very yeah, intolerant no, of error. Yeah, I mean, if you and also if you know. Steve Jobs' history, he was adopted at a very young age. He did not get a very good relationship. Well, 
he he had a very loving adopted family, but I think the trauma of not having his real biological parents always followed him. Mm -hmm. And that's a lot of the reason why Jobs was as great as he was. And so it's exactly like, I don't, I don't know that much about Steve Jobs, but it's exactly like the description yeah. that um, you just, you know, mm -hmm. it's the same thing. So, 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 I mean, I think we, we, we've kind of covered this, but like, you know, one of the things yeah. that, um, that Adam said is like, uh, well, one of the things that Tim said on his stream in response to Adam was that Adam was fired because he blew up at Lydia and, yeah, and that no, was a legal liability. He did blow up, but Tim would blow up a lot of time. And I think you've said that it's almost like a patterning or like a photocopy method. It's like, if you blow up, I'm going to blow up too. We're having a disagreement. So let me yell at a third party where the third party is really disrespecting me and doing something that's extremely triggering. She has no idea of the backstory. And she says this thing and it's like, well, you know what? F you, I'm not going to be on a show with you if you are going to accuse me of something like that. And it's extremely hurtful. And so, of course, I can imagine how it played out Yeah. to a T. Well, he didn't well, mention, when I first met him, he didn't tell me that he, he didn't mention anything about him blowing up. So he, he admitted that, but... He absolutely told me everything about the relationship in the A word, but you have to also keep in mind here, Lydia was married and Tim wasn't. So is it really that much? This is life. Life is unfair. Life is not always perfect in well, messy situations. Let let's talk about that. How would you how would you describe the dynamic between Tim and Lydia? Very much like you come to work, you work, um, we're friends, but I can't spend any time with you at all because this huh. is, this is unsustainable and I have to, I can't, you know, um, stay in any situation where you're, you're trying to, to push my emotional buttons, you know? And I felt like, so Lydia had a house away from the place. I'm sorry. I, um, she lived in Frederick and, She's a sweetheart. I mean, I know that this is really bad, but she was always super nice to me. And there's other people and other stories that are true of what happened with her and those people. But um, I always found that she was very much, she kept her emotions to herself. She was very quiet. She would just do her work and then go home and not speak to anyone. And it was this very much, like, I'm not going to uh, process uh, this and give you joy if uh, you're not with me and you brought back a girlfriend that, you know, had been the one and, like, you chose me and I'm not good enough. So, you know, I don't know. Yeah. But she was always trying to do her absolute best on the stream. And you could see it because her, her quality of work during the show, I think, was extremely good, honestly. This is just my opinion as an outsider. However, when the cameras are off, it's a different story. She's just very much like, she kind of wants to get out of there and go back to her life. And well, it's and just not working out. And she's it's since left there, you out. know? Yeah, I know. That's, I think, a big reason why Adam had the courage to do this is like, mm -hmm. she's no longer in the picture. She actually is living her life. And she never apologized to him, you know? Yeah. So I think mean, about that. And and I'll say this too with all the stuff with Tim and Lydia. Like I don't I I'm not going to yeah. come down. This this might surprise like people, but like I'm not going to come down as hard on Lydia yeah. as I think a I lot know. of people are. Because he was very friendly to me. Yeah, I mean, like I I you know life happens, and and I'm not going to judge Lydia for what she's yeah. done. I think that people should kind of honestly lay off of her for that because right. at the end of the day, I Tim mean, was the CEO Tim was yeah. in charge, and and Tim Tim should have said no to be honest about it, yeah. and um and that's that's just kind of my perspective. I blame him more than I blame her. Right. We also um I have no full idea of what the timeline is of when his his true girlfriend, Allison, came back into the picture. I know that they had an existing relationship for a long time in the past, but they were not able to be together because Tim was starting his career and he's doing everything that we all know him for in his whole past. And she came back at some point before I was there when, I don't know exactly, but it, what Adam said, I, I absolutely believe him that she came back and, and Tim was trying to say, well, oh, it's not going to be a problem. Um, we can have them both here. And, and Adam's like, no, dude, like, 
that's not fair to any of the people in this situation. I, I, I fully believe Tim didn't know how to process that emotionally because he cared about Lydia. One other thing is, um, has she said anything about what she has? Has she? I don't know. I haven't been paying attention. I don't know. Well, yeah. she has a medical condition and oh. it's a very traumatic type of one. And I think Tim really cared about her and he really, he wanted her to have the best life that she could have, but he realized there's no way to make it work. Him, you know, and his producer. It's not like, um, if you've ever seen the, the movie Network, it's like a 1970s movie network. Yeah, and then great movie. remember the, um, the younger girl sleeping with the older guy or whatnot. Mm -hmm. And it just doesn't work out. She blows up on him. He blew, whatever blows up on her. It just didn't work. Yeah. I mean, so, and, and, and I think, you know, yeah. it, it, this is something I want to emphasize because this is, this is another it's no thing one's fault. I, it's it, no one's fault. It's no one's fault. These things, these things. And this happen. was during COVID. And I also think that um, I ju just in general, I mean, this is like the dichotomy of what yeah. I've heard about with Tim, where Tim will have these moments where he yeah. blows up on people. Yeah, but he's fine. Five minutes later, he's fine. Well, but like it, it's, you know, it, it's a blow up mm -hmm. and, then, and it's sometimes over minor stuff that does not require a blow up. And then sometimes he's actually really nice and kind mm -hmm. to people and yeah. takes care of them. And I think that that's just an interesting kind of dichotomy to me. It, it, it almost to me seems, and tell me if this uh, yeah. resonates with you. It's like, um, it's like, you don't know if he's going to be hot or cold. Is that true? You can usually you can usually tell by his demeanor like what kind of day he's having in terms of is it is it going to plan or is there any problems and if he has something that something's wrong you notice immediately usually mm -hmm. because it's like his body language is different and you know like a confrontation is going to happen and it's just very sad um, mm -hmm. but like I said these are these are caused by what he considers outside forces or we'll go into that on another stream <laughs> maybe to say the least <laughs> so i want to take a question from my locals um yeah. and this comes from uh jenny's getting inky with it and she asks what was employee turnover like did where people did like come um, and go were a lot all right. of people fired i'm gonna be like... very very clear on the whole turnover situation everything was honestly perfect there until until covid we all did, Tim did a show, um, it's called The Long Shots uh, Bar, it's in West Virginia, and Tim got to hang out with like, I wanna say, all, I don't know how many people, it looked like 2,000 people, came from all around the world and all around the country to go see Tim and Ian and everyone and Seamus and them all talk, and they had a great jam session. If you wanna to subscribe to Timcast, you know, com, you can actually see the footage of that night. Mm -hmm. And everything up until that moment, Honestly, yes, the blow-ups happened. Yes, you know, things were kind of co complicated. Mm -hmm. But no one had been fired that I know of. I don't think anyone had been fired. I'm not entirely sure on that, but I don't remember anyone being fired. I mean, the whole entire environment that Tim created was honestly, is paradisical. It was like the craziest socialistic, you know, socialism, uh, utopia experiment you had ever seen in your life. It was magic. It was honestly, it's well, like Adam the greatest, had inspired. right? Yes. <laughs> Cor <laughs> correction. <laughs> but he one was the only one up, fired. but he was the only yeah. one up until Tim got COVID. Yeah, essentially, I don't, right. you knew up of. until Tim got COVID mm -hmm. and we, we got COVID the next day. And I can tell you, I, I talked to all the security like the main, the head of security there and the people Tim had hired, he paid hundreds of thousands of dollars for the security of that place. These guys were hardened professionals. They had military backgrounds, police backgrounds, DOJ stuff. They were full-time security. They didn't do any other part-time job. This is what they did. And we had over like hundreds of people, 800 or more people, the whole parking lot and the ones next to it were filled up with cars. And Tim does this this show for a couple hours, and everything is amazing. Tim's mother's there. Um, there's other people there that are very close to Tim from his past, and we're all there, and we're having a great time, and we're hanging out. It's one of the most magical things I'd ever seen. And I, have, like I said, I went to school for music, so I had quite yeah. a. I get to be on stage a lot, and it's, you know, it's something you're used to. Right. Um, that was the happiest I'd ever seen Tim in my life the whole yeah. time. And then what happens is within 
literally like the next day people start coming down with symptoms mm. and tim got covid oh yeah it almost well, killed him let's let's talk about let's talk That's about another that. stream well, let, yeah, let's we talk, want to. well i want to i want to get to the question but let me yes. just i need to do a pause because i want to respond directly to something in the chat that has nothing to do with you but i'm going to take advantage of, course, of that I, 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 anything yeah i'm here so, i'm here so, for you guys yeah yeah, yeah. so and for take, adam we're, we're gonna now, this is the clear well, Sure, this right. is this is actually a direct, yeah but so i need to respond to something that someone has chatted yeah. in just just for me um not not that one hang on hang on this one darth cha yeah. says did you know that krigler claims that you threw him under the bus rather than the other way around that is not true that is not true <laughs> in any way adam is lying yeah if adam wants to talk to me adam knows <laughs> adam, how to please give us a me. phone call or like something adam is that. lying he is talking to people yeah, that are just, lying to him and well, he needs to stop. It's sad. It's just, I um, Because I, I have done yeah. nothing but have Adam's back in the last week and a half. Seriously. And he is acting like a child. Seriously. But, oh, um, God. So, yeah. so Tim got COVID and I wanted to, I want to talk yeah. about the employee turnover. So, so, God, so far as you, so far as you know, before Tim got COVID, there wasn't a whole lot of turnover. There also weren't as many employees. I he was think, hiring more Adam. people continuously. More people it, would come, show up, do do work, and is rosy. It really was. Was it common for him to fire people after he got COVID? In the beginning, no, not right away. It um, it it took a lot more things to happen. And to be honest with you, I was in such like a, a rush after COVID. I remember having a phone call with my mother mm -hmm. about this because um, I. Tim was Tim almost got hospitalized over this. It was bad. It was really bad. I caught it too. We all did. Um, I was like on the beanbag in the sunroom when Tim was on the phone with Rogan, and he's like, "What do I do?" You know, and Rogan referred him to specialists. You might have heard the story because Tim talked about it. Yeah, specialists that had a therapy that absolutely works definitively works the science is there and if not for this therapy i'm not sure what have happened we might not have a tim cast mm -hmm. that's a real story i i hope people will understand that how serious this was we all caught it i caught it i had it in 20 um yeah february 2020 i almost died until i figured out certain combinations of vitamins you know might be a good thing you might want to have good right. nutrition get some sunlight you know and I knew so, Tim was going to have a hard time with this disease and it was going to challenge him. It's going to tear him down. So you know? I think what I'm, what I'm hearing you suggest, and let me know if I have this correct, is that Mentality shifted. Tim, Tim, yeah, Tim changed after he got COVID probably because yeah. he got so sick. I, he got so sick. He started to see life in a different manner. And I remember him saying he, one other thing to understand when you take off of work for two weeks or however long it was, not only do you lose hundreds of thousands of dollars of revenue. I, I happen to know the exact number, but I'm not going to say it. Yeah, we don't want to um, do it's that. It's a lot. It's a lot. Um, and you have an experimental treatment that costs $4,000 per session per employee to get it done and to get them the help they need so that they can recover from this god-awful disease. Um, he was hemorrhaging money at that point, And he also didn't know if he was going to make it until he had the therapy and then all the people closest to him got the therapy and they said, Oh my God, this works almost like magic. He was better within one day. He says it was instant. I did not get the therapy because I had, I had um, antibodies from my right. prior COVID. I had it really bad, but I knew how to beat the thing. And it took me about three weeks or no, maybe not nah, two weeks, whatever. It was not nearly as bad when you've had it before. So what changed after in terms of like why what so more people ended up getting fired like yeah. kind of on the spot over silly things after Tim it, got it, COVID? It ended up well no uh, the the firings I don't I don't remember who's the first person to get fired other than Adam. I mean sorry the second person <laughs> to get fired. I don't remember who yeah. it was. Um but but Tim got to some point because of the COVID where he I remember him saying this distinctly. He was in a conversation with one of the guests or someone close to him, like maybe, you know, Seamus. Or, he said, I feel like this disease was designed to kill poor people. 
He's like, if you have money, you can weather this. And it was like a realization to him that it just hit him so hard. Cause I don't, I don't think if before that, I don't know if he really, if he really th thought that what was claimed was happening on the news with COVID was really as bad as, as they were saying. And that was his like wake up moment that this is real life. People die from this shit. And right. it was really bad. And damn near two thirds of the company got the disease. Even people who went home and people who had the vaccine, well, they had a hard time. They really had a hard time. Tim's no. complete demeanor changed. He stopped hanging out with people as much. He's, he, he still did hang out, but it was like, it's like you could see some type of like a stoicism. You could just see it in his eyes. There was like a stoic version of him that was like a new version that I had not seen that before. The time I remember before that was super warm and loving. Like there was a time when I left work for three weeks, I had to deal with my father um, uh, estate. And when I got back, I think he thought I wasn't going to come back. And he gave me a huge hug and he, and he smiled. And he said, like, I'm so glad you're back. He literally thought I was not going to come back. Mm -hmm. So. So how did he change in regards to his staff after, after that? It seemed like the, the blow ups would get more severe and for longer. And it seemed like there's a lot of fear. He had a lot of fear that a lot of things were going to go wrong and that the bus the business was not viable. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Oh my God, Tim, like don't do this to yourself. You're making X amount of dollars. You have X profit ratio. And I'm like, you can take this to the moon. You really can. Like this is, of course it's sustainable. Yes. You have to build these other brands. Yes. You have to have these other ventures. You have to sell other products like say books, for example, you know, but in his mind, it wasn't working. He's like, everything is falling apart and ripping apart at the seams. And so let me see. I want to, I want to give a little, he got very, an, yeah. I want to give a little analysis on this and what I see. And then I'd like you to respond and tell me if, if you agree. So Tim is building this business and things are going really, this huge empire. Things Everyone are loves really it well. there. And then Tim gets COVID. And he gets really sick and a lot of people get COVID and a lot of people get really sick. And yeah. once he recovers, he starts to believe that the business could he, fail. Yeah. He starts to have fears around. He might not feeling. live long enough to succeed in his goal. And, and to change the world. as a result of that, he starts kind of like the blow ups that were already occurring before, but yeah. now the blow on a less frequent basis. Exactly. And now they're, now they're starting to get more severe and more frequent. And I, I gotta be honest, like what it sounds like to me is that Tim might be struggling with the rate of expansion. Stressed. Well, he's struggling he extremely, with the- Yeah, he's expanding fast. Yeah, the, he's struggling with like the he's mental thing, thing that happens with when you expand a large business and- Complexity. He's almost, he's almost, it doesn't just go up, it actually goes exponentially up yeah. to more people. People need to understand that it's not linear. So, so what I'm, what I suspect may have happened, this is just, I, I don't know yeah. this for sure, but it seems to me like Tim is inadvertently self-sabotaging himself. And he was. The expansion of his business. Other people said that I, too. Yes. Oh, well, tell me more he, about that. Is Tim self-sabotaging? Uh, Tim was absolutely self-sabotaging. And um, it was like, he has this fear of success. Like anyone who's been an entrepreneur knows about this. You don't always make it your first time. You don't even always make it your second time. I think statistically, it, it depends on different markets, different sectors and stuff. But I've heard anything from the, it takes three times the failure before you succeed to up to 10. Um, I think the, the average for a lot of kind of technical industries is about the, the CEO, well, the founder and entrepreneur has to go through about seven stages of learning and growth before they hit their first success. I mean, one of the first books I read about that was Robert Kiyosaki's work. And I read Trump's work. I've read a lot of this stuff yeah. that I used to be, I used to be really into that. Yeah. So, so we think maybe Tim started to self-sabotage because did. maybe he got scared. He would tell people, he would tell people, this is not working. I'm going to go, I'm going to, I'm going to have to shut it all down and I'm just going to live in the woods, like live on the, you know, down by the river in the van. I mean, mm -hmm. it was a, it was a nice van. He drove all the way to California and went on the road with it, but he was absolutely starting to, to feel like he was not going to make it. And that there is no way out. It's like the walls are closing in on me. The darkness is coming. I can only build this for so long. I can only sustain it so long. And also keep in mind, no one knows as much about what's really going on behind the scenes in terms of YouTube and algorithms and, and the whole thing and alphabet. Let's not forget.
why did they name it that? Um, he doesn't know what's going on except that the walls are closing in and it's getting darker. It's like you get down to where there's the last candle light. It's the only thing left that's lit. You had a world of like magic and rainbows and the whole thing was golden. But then after COVID, things start closing in on you. Yeah. I want to read Sequitur's uh, super chat. Sounds like he's in battle mode. The coof made him all, feel all the time. everyone and everything is under threat. Was, yeah. So he has to ramp up his efforts to change the world. Well, he just really, what, what he, told, he told me exactly what I want to do. He wanted to build up all these people's careers and have all these brands of under one roof and have it where the show could go on paranormal, you know, books and series and all kinds of things could be done and that he wouldn't have to lead it anymore. He told me that was his goal several times. He said he wanted to like retire from public life and be a philanthropist and literally just kind of just be, you know, yeah. a person that, that had built this and had started this whole thing. And it was so different from any other business I've ever seen in my life and been a part of. Yeah. He really wanted something special. So I want to ask about a few um, a few employees that people have kind of asked me about. And yeah. the first one I want to ask about is um, Miracle. What happened with Miracle? <sighs> That's uh, That was related to a mistake that I made. I actually got her fired. What happened? Somebody who was close to uh, the house leaked a, um, a screenshot of a, uh, a company chat system that we had set up that was, it wasn't that secure, honestly, but the whole networks were secure. My whole goal was to keep people from getting inside the house, like in terms of network. Um, I had someone I really trusted who was close to this situation. We stayed in contact and she sent me um, screenshots of another employee that got fired. You might know him as Nick Elwell. Nick Elwell got fired over something that's, I have the full story and it was in the screenshots leaked and I, that's all I wanna say about that. That's okay. That's she got right. fired because I, this information was shared with me through someone close to Tim who had access to Miracle from the outside of the house. They were communicating outside through like social networks. Mm -hmm. Miracle took a screenshot of the company chat the day that Nick Elwell got fired and that got into my possession. And then I shared it with someone else who was, I thought one of Tim's best friends. And then next thing I know it's on Twitter. Mm -hmm. It got on Twitter and then Tim. Yeah. Um, Lisa mentioned someone in her video and yeah. you don't want to, you don't want to use her name, but yeah. what, what, what are we calling her? Are we calling her Mary? I was going to go with Mary. Mary. Mary Poppins, you know. Yeah. Um, and, and so what happened with what happened with uh Mary? Mary was one of Tim's most trusted, most loyal, absolutely friendless person in the world you'd ever met. And Tim brought her back into his um life after I don't know the exact time period that they met. I know what she said, which was 20 years. She had known this person for 20 years and she deeply cared about him i mean as much as allison cares about him maybe more um adam told the truth on this whole thing i mean what he said about this person she came in at a point when tim didn't know how to deal with lydia he was trying to keep her on the show but take as best care of her as he possibly could as a friend that he had to let go romantically of and and uh, this person, you know, tried to help Tim the best that she could. And it ended up causing conflicts and a little bit of, I wouldn't say insecurity issues with Tim's actual girlfriend, which I think should be his fiance because he's totally worth it. She loves him to death and he loves her. He never cheated on her after after um, Lydia. And I, I, I'll stand by that to the grave. I, I never saw Tim fraternize with anyone else in the house. Mm -hmm. Not even with this person, you know, who is yeah. his friend. He wouldn't touch any other woman. He really wouldn't. He would just go into his, his room with, and go be with Allison as soon as the show's over. And he would hang out with all the employees and skate on music and parties and stuff and great food. He'd buy hundreds of 500 hours of food a day. Like, if, and for everyone to share, we would all share into his success. He would treat us 
so well, and he would try to privately make up to Allison for what had happened. Yeah. And Adam explained it. He left out a lot of details, but I think all you need to know about the situation is that Adam did tell the truth. She was there as an HR person, and it didn't work out. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it was, yeah, she really, they all cared about Tim, but she it, definitely did. So, and, and you know, it seems to me. I don't lie. I don't know how else to say it. Yeah. She told and, the truth. Well, so so with, with her, Mary specifically, and, and we're not yeah, talking Thomas. about, we're not talking about the Mary that works there now, to be clear. Yeah. This is an alias. This is oh, no, no. <laughs> and, and some people, some people in the chat have, uh, have guessed who, uh, guessed who we're talking about, but. Uh, well, but you again, really shouldn't uh, care. Y'all need to leave listen. that woman alone. Well, I mean, I guess here, here's I mean, what honestly. I want to, hang on, hang on, hang on here. So here's, here's what I want to want to get to though, because there, yeah. there have been people that have been fired from Tim Cash. She was number two. Just she hang was on. number two. Hang on, hang on. There have been people who have have been fired from Timcast just for talking to her. Um, Am I wrong? Yeah. yeah. No, you're not wrong. So that seems to me to be a little excessive. If I'm honest with you, it it was. Allison was like the most loving, kind person you'd ever meet in your life. Um, she cried to me several times over this situation with Lydia and it was in the past. It was not ongoing. Like understand that Tim had tried to prove to Allison that he loved her and he was not messing around anymore. And he would always try to prove this. Allison did a lot of things. I think that because she couldn't emotionally handle all that happened, all the trauma. And so, you know, it's what it is. Yeah. So Andrew has a. I actually lived at that house almost the whole time. There's a couple of weeks I didn't live at the house, but whatever. Let's let, let's let's talk about that in a second. Andrew says, "I never understood why Tim didn't rebrand. Putting yourself in the face of the business seems like a bad idea if you want to step away someday." All the all the revenue came from the main show, almost like a lot. Mm-hmm. Not all. I mean, I'm I'm exaggerating, but his goal was to get the other shows like Pop Culture Crisis, which y'all should go and subscribe to and watch all those amazing people talk about the news of the day. I mean, there's some of the most, yeah. the best, the most dedicated professionals I've ever read in my life. Um, but financially, these other shows were not working out. They were not bringing in enough money to sustain the operation, not even half of it. If Tim were to somehow, for whatever reason, have the main channel be banned, blocked, de-indexed, um, the whole company would fold. And I have a financial background. I have an accounting. I have four mm-hmm. semesters of accounting. I can tell you that's a fact. Yeah. The whole company would fold. You would have to fire two thirds of the people on the spot just to pay the bills for the next three months. I, I want to bring up this. Even chat. though he owns the house. I want to bring up this chat from Lisa. Lisa yeah. says, when Tim fired yeah. Miracle, he that's told, a true story. That's he a told, true story. Let me let me read it so everyone in the in the in the chat can hear. When when Tim fired Miracle, he told everyone that they were fired until they tell him who sent the messages out, and they then intimidated Miracle to go through yeah. her phone. Yeah, that was that someone true? that was not Tim who did the intimidation. But who yes, did the intimidation? <laughs> Kanye West has a nice photo on Instagram right now. There's a little there's someone wearing a hat in the picture. Um, <laughs> that's all I'm gonna say. All right. That's Sorry, fair. just like where's Waldo, you know. That's fair so, enough. That's fair enough. Yeah, I don't want to but, throw him under the bus. He's a, no, he was a good friend. That's that's he is, even though we're very far apart. He's, I still feel like he's a friend. That's all right. Everything's everything's cool with the microphone, so it's, it's, no, it's all good. It's all good. It's, just, it's all good. Yeah. It's all good. It's all good. I guess um, I'm trying to deflect. It's just that you know. It's no. I no, mean, that's I, true. I um, You're every fine. the the I don't know how word of that got out. I I do not have any idea. I'm not going to speculate. I got that same, it's almost like, it's like, how am I still involved in the drama if I've been gone for X amount of months and I don't really want to be? I guess I'm choosing to be. I mean, well, honestly, it's my fault. Well, no, I mean, I think that, you know, this is, I, I get yeah, it. Yeah, the word got to me from two sources and that's exactly what happened from the other sources who don't really talk to each other. Yeah. And I so. think, I think, you know, why, why are you involved in this? I mean, I think Apparently you're, social you're media, you're talking story. to people on the outside. Yeah. I just don't know. Let me let me go. Th- let me I go to local. Speculate. Let me go to local. So so you lived there. You lived there for a little while, and I I personally up until I caught years. COVID, and I would spend yeah. maybe one weekend every three weeks away, and just stay with my roommate. 
Mm -hmm. um, in uh, Brunswick, Maryland. We had a little flat, it was a thousand a month, 980 square feet. No, sorry, it was $980, $980 a month in utilities and it was a uh, thousand square feet. It was in the old historic district and it's an amazing spot, really amazing. I had a wonderful, wonderful landlord named, uh, uh, I'm rusty here. Yeah. <laughs> I would try to spend as many waking hours at Tim's house as possible. And the reason for this, and this is part of my mistake in all of this is I told him that I could only work with him for a year because I had pre-existing business arrangements with equity split 50, 50 equity contracts with other partners. And there's, there was essentially some, um, some legal stuff we had to go through in order to, um, to join, to join them in this mission, you know? Yeah. And so I told him, yeah, I'll work for you, but I'm only going to do it for a year because I have other people that I am, they feel like I'm abandoning them. And they were like programmers out in California or in India. So, 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 so Mark Robichaud is asking a question and I want to, I want to try to explain this. And again, I'm doing this through my organizational psychology lens. Mark Robichaud says, isn't there yeah, a I mean, this is nuts. So let me, yeah, let, some, me, let, me yeah. let me, let me, let me explain before you respond. Um, so, so in the this vast, is your expertise. Ah, thank you. The vast majority of employees at any company, and this is actually a general yeah. thing that people should know, is that the vast majority of employees are employees at will, which means right. They can be that fired. was our contract. Exactly. So they had an employment fired. at will contract. So they can be fired at any time yes. for any reason or for yeah, no true. reason at all. So so Tim is completely within his legal yes, bounds in, it's in the legal to, to fire someone mm -hmm. for whatever reason he wants. I think the problem the problem comes in for me, not so much it's not so much is it illegal for Tim to do this? It's not illegal for no, him to do it. No, it's not. It's not. It's just it's just not a good idea if you want to build up an organization yeah, especially if, right. that is going to support a a multi-million dollar operation. Million it's, dollar. Not it's not it's not a good idea and it's not going to allow Tim to to grow and sustain and the way that he's Right. It's like slamming on the brakes people, on the train. Exactly. That's exactly it. And 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 the way that Tim is blowing up at people and making people walk on eggshells, it's not going Going to allow him mm -hmm. to to be able to grow the type of business that he wants to grow so that he really can step away this is these are just like he wants to retire and just yeah. be a philanthropist he told me that multiple times he told other people that i i know he's gonna still want to go to the conferences and the media tech conferences and stuff like the minds um conference one of the best things for the happiest moments in his life i've seen uh probably even more so than long shots was uh the minds tech well the minds conference in september Mm -hmm. so, I want to. So I actually have a. He still wants to do stuff like that. So he just so, doesn't want to manage this gigantic steamship. He's going seems, through the ocean. Well, it seems to me. So does Tim employ anyone that's not like a friend of a friend or like a? a no, no. He he employed almost. I think almost every person he employed was people that he kind of sought out or had crossed paths with, and so he did employ a bunch of friends. I don't know the details on that. I'm not going to say specifically, but he would, yeah, he would of course employ um, friends, but they were mostly like YouTuber friends. Like there was a person who rode uh, uh, BMX bikes that was employed for a long time. And I, I don't know the you know, details of his pay or whatnot, but um, Tim would employ friends, actual friends, and they had full-time positions. They didn't need, like they did not want for anything and they had a full salary and, all that there's no benefits, but you know, cast castle civil war. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he would employ so many people that he thought were valuable people and try to build, help them have a great life. It seems to me, and this might be the case with really with Mary, our alias Mary, is yeah. that, that he he would have someone like that that he was friends with or that he, he didn't he past. didn't like think that for her she was replaceable. Yeah, I feel like well, he was no, working at a grocery store. Right, but but and let me. He's a me, beautiful person. Yeah, so so but so it seems to me that what happened with her is uh, he wanted to help her out. He wanted to give her a job, and he said, "Okay, yeah, come work for it me." It lasted a long time. And then he said, "You do HR," and but she wasn't yeah. really. Qualified she went to do on. HR. She went on. Um, she was the co-host on. Um, pop culture crisis for a long time up until the new Mary King. Well, you're giving her away now. <laughs> I thought we okay. already did that. That's, that's what well, we kind of did. We kinda, no, that's okay. We kind of did. But I guess my, my point is. She that was very she, valued. But, but, in but, the beginning. 
But my point is that Tim is not setting people up for success when he's hiring his friends and then saying, do this job that you don't really maybe have a yeah. lot of experience doing. And then Plus, I'm going to, yeah. and then I'm going to blow up at you if you make any minor yeah. mistake, which is going to make them walk on eggshells yeah. even more and be even more afraid to try to do the job that Tim wanted them to do. Yeah. I mean, there is a lot of, there was a lot of positions in the company and they did some, they did a seriously good job of hiring for all the really core positions. Now, when it comes to things, I mean, technical support is a really core position. I really think so. Because she did amazing at that. She's the only one who could actually handle that. We had replaced like three people to do her job. She was the only person on top of it who really came to work, did all her work, did it perfectly every single day on and on for, for like a year. Um, but Tim would absolutely hire some people that were kind of like YouTube friends and just get them involved and pay them. Yeah. So, so and by the way, I don't know about Luke if he's getting paid. <laughs> oh, well, that's, well, we'll leave Let's that out. Let's sell then. some more t-shirts yeah. because Epstein really did not kill himself. Ah, uh, well, we'll, <laughs> we'll leave that out then. Um, so non-sided wants to know, Tim blamed plenty of his decisions about Adam on his oh, lawyers. God. Do you know yeah. anything about his legal representation okay, or this legal is, involvement at all? Tim needs to fire every goddamn lawyer he has and um, get new ones. Um, those lawyers are, Tim, if you ever see this, those lawyers are not out to help you. I don't know how else I can say this. Like I said, I did my first startup with a cousin who's exact, who's six months younger than me. He is a JD now. He works in corporate law. And I read what they, what they prepared for you in terms of contracts these contracts are not going to get the best work ethic out of people. And I don't believe your lawyers are really doing you a favor writing contracts like that. And I'm not saying that there's not any good in the relationship with this firm, but I feel like in some ways Tim is being used by his legal firm. And because, I mean, I don't, Tim, didn't he say he dropped out of high school at like freshman year I don't know. Like that that's is not extreme. True. It's not. That's okay. not true. I oh, well, well, according to what I what I have heard from a secret yeah. source, Tim was okay. one. Tim was one test away from graduating from high school. Okay. Yeah, but so you're talking Chicago. So it's a lot different yeah. than where I went to school. For that's example, that's all good. Mm -hmm. Um, his lawyers are just. I feel like they're predatory, yeah. and I think that they. Don't help Tim resolve contractual disputes with, say, a co-host that was your best friend for eight years. And what they told you were lies, like legal, legally invalid advice. It's a yeah. breach of their duty as lawyers to their clients to tell him certain things that are just, just horribly misinformed. Yeah. I mean, I know how to read legal contracts. Well, and I'll say this too. And again, I like, I'll say there is, there is no, not wrong, but he could have changed it. That's... But there is no law in the state of New yeah. Jersey in which, in which Adam yelling at Lydia would He's have an outside him. firm. He does not have well, any retained lawyers. No, no, no. But like what I'm saying is there is, there is literally no law in the state of New Jersey where they were at the time. Right. What that would have required yeah. Tim to yeah, fire no, Tim, Adam. Tim lied him. because he doesn't know lie. any. He doesn't yeah. either. Either he's lying for his teeth, which I don't really believe. I think he literally just doesn't know better. When when Tim was at Fusion and Vice, now I think the Vice working relationship was very healthy for him, very good. I think when we went to Fusion, that's when things start to really get effed up. And I don't think that they did Tim any service by coaching him and getting him this huge contract with all this stuff, but then like saying, Hey, Tim, no, you're not able to do anything because we right. have the master key right. and you work for us and know who you're working for. And Oh, but, you know, that thing that you said you want to do now, nah, scrap that. Just go off right. and film this thing over in Africa. But or, you know, that's, that's different than, than this specific so situation. So and, and, and Tim I learned how to do this somewhere yeah. though, is what I'm well, saying. No, I think, I think that Tim, I think that Tim made this up to make himself. He, yeah. Better he, he, I stopped watching his, through. It's just not true. Uh, yeah, I, I tried to clarify that at the beginning. It was very difficult to watch Tim okay. try to. Um, well, no, he he did. Here's the thing. I I watched Tim's response the day it happened. I found out maybe two hours after, and I I watched it up until a minute thirty five or so. Mm -hmm. I I spotted what I considered the first lie or the first white lie, which was 
something that um, should have been like not even that important. It was about his brother because, you know, um, you could have just said, yeah, we had a bad situation, um, but we resolved it. So Adam told more of the truth in that circumstance than Tim, a decent amount more because it got really bad. And Tim said, well, you know, my brother never, he only said one sentence to explain the situation. And he moved on to the next point. I think he should have given a more, a more, Mm -hmm. compassionate response to what had really occurred and why Adam was claiming that there's all this dysfunction and stuff because there was dysfunction, yeah. you know, but to go and try to say that what Adam said was not true was just not the right move. Yeah, you know? no, it was not. It was hockey, not correct. You know, you don't, it was you don't expect to win. The other team has the, um, the puck next time and they, they hit it back and right. just back and forth scoring. I never says, is it strange the swatting stopped after he fired all those people? I, is that true? This is internet. Look, the swatting thing is a very sensitive matter. And to be honest, anything that you hear about um, about the timeline of the swats, you're not being told the truth because they will get swatted and they will still continue to broadcast a whole stream. And you're never going to hear about it because... We do not know to this day, the FBI and the DOJ has not found the swatter. And this has been ongoing since January 6th of 2021. It's almost freaking, it's, you know, it's almost been 24 months, right? Is my timeline correct? They got swatted more times than any other celebrity probably in the world. Mm. And it's still ongoing. And no, it did not stop. I have really good sources to tell me the swattings are still going on. And that breaks my heart because I've, as someone who I considered, when I went there, I was not Tim's friend. I was a person going to do a job. By the end of it, he had befriended me. He befriended all these people. And I felt it was part of my responsibility and my, my duty to him to try to get to the bottom of that. Um, if you remember the people I called out at the beginning of the show, there's, a lot of people in this country that know what goes on behind the scenes, behind these entities and these governments and these agencies. And there's somebody who knows something about what's what happened with that and who did it. Somebody has a lot of money, a lot to lose by the people that go on Tim's show. Okay. You know? Let's move on from the swatting. Well, and that, saying, of course, is something going, that I um, that I don't condone at all or support at or all. Or doxing. I mean, yeah, I uh, for real. Uh, Colleen says, forgive me for being slow. Was the Mary gal the one who people couldn't talk to or Allison? Who couldn't people talk to? Hmm. Tim just wanted things to stay on course. That was what, what was going could, on. Could people talk to Tim if they had questions or problems or anything like that? I, 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 I'm sure some people could. I think it probably depended on the person. But to be honest... My experience is like, personally, I could not talk to Tim about anything. Like if everything that had to, all the talking, everything that wasn't to do with the live shows and the planning was people would go to Allison and talk to her and she would have a schedule where she would be, she would take off of what she was doing at any point in time to go to talk some, to someone if they had a problem. And so it's almost like they counterbalance each other. Like, Tim would be here, Allison would be there, and they swapped and they performed different roles in managing. They were the HR. Tim and his girlfriend were the HR. He he never got a professional HR manager other than the person he really got rid of in a spectacular fashion. So yeah. they never and, resolved it. And Lisa says Tim didn't want people to talk yeah. to, to her yeah. either. No. <laughs> um, Why do you think that was? Fear. It was fear of the unknown. It really was. Tim didn't know where these um, threats were coming from. They were impacting his business and his safety. They absolutely impacted his safety. He had to get full-time security guards. That's all real. I met the guy. He was a nice, very young, talented man mm -hmm. and a professional and a really good, accurate shot as well. Yeah. <laughs> and it was just really, really sad. We, so, we armored that place off, up like it was an actual castle. I mean, first it's like, we don't even lock the doors. Next we have a fence. And then, well, next we have, um, you know, the gate thing in the front uh, driveway. Next we have a fence. Next we have a security guard. Next we have, you know, everything. It just got more and more armored up. 
as the threats never stopped. They never ceased. Mm -hmm. Col Colin says, I think Tim has PTSD. People trust you with their lives and you almost die. You see the real stakes. Yeah, the stakes that open door to the abyss. Failure mm -hmm. cannot be tolerated. No. At least that's how mine is. How do you feel it's about that? Absolutely true. Uh, Tim traveled around the world going to war zones and very chaotic environments where people did die like around him. And he knew at any point that he would go out, he could go out and he wouldn't be able to do anything else. So I think he has massive PTSD. I think he's never resolved it. He never sought therapy for it. And when he started to have success, it was going, it was like golden up until COVID. And then when things got more serious and then the, the um, SWATs happened starting on January 6th, which by the way, we know what happened 365 days prior. Yeah. It's almost like a symbolic, huh? Hmm. Um, Tim didn't know what to do. He didn't know which way to turn the wheel of the ship and not hit the iceberg. Yeah. And Lisa says there are people in the house right now that are scared to talk yeah. to me. So I've lost friends. I think I this, this to me is like the, one of the most troubling things of yeah. all of this is it really does feel like, you know, I can understand to a certain extent how, how yeah. Tim kind of got to this place. Tim, Tim success, like ramped up exponentially. He became extremely his quickly. persona. And then, yeah, well, and then, and and he brought all these people in and, yeah. and, you know, he got sick. He may have, he may have almost really died. Contemplated. He may have really not for Joe Rogan. He could have died. Right. He may have really com contemplated his own demise. He has a big plan of what he wants to do in the world and he wants to achieve that. And he, all of a sudden he has this thing that's growing really quickly and he has all these people working for him, yeah. but Threats are coming in. He's getting swatted. He doesn't know where it's coming from. He's he's starting to get maybe I, I'm going to use the word a little bit paranoid about things. He, he, he blows up at his employees yeah. every time something is out of his control. He screams at people, even yeah. if it's just for a moment. He stri starts basically striking the fear of God into people. Then after he gets COVID, the blow ups start ramping up even more, meaning that <sighs> His, his own team is becoming afraid of, of what's going to happen unknown. when he's around. A question mark. He's starting to wonder, like, can I trust the people around me? Can I trust? That's, that's a really good point. Well, I have to right? actually lay traps exactly. so that exactly. people, if I know there's a mouse and it eats the cheese, you know. So he's starting to get paranoid about the people oh. he has around him. He starts firing can I trust? over... Yeah. Over, quite frankly, the things that I've heard and what you've talked about here, he's he's firing people over minor things that would not result yeah. in their firing had they been in a different environment. But he's a different structure to try a different to, management structure. That's right all. To, to to try to well, it's not even a management. There's no management yeah. structure so far as I can tell. But no, like, he, <laughs> it's two people exactly. Like, and it's not That's a real it. management structure. That's so. All it is. So it, it, it's amazing, it, it, though. And, and so it seems today, like his employees are afraid of him. There yeah. are people that they're not allowed to talk to. If they talk to these people at all, they're going to get fired. Um, it just seems like there is a lot of tension around around the house that is quite frankly a little. Resolved. We can we can understand maybe how it got to this point. Yeah, understand but, where it came from. Yeah, and the origins can, behind all this, but it's unnecessary and going to be really complicated in terms of growing a multi-million dollar media empire. Right. And I guess my concern, and again, I'm looking at this from an organizational psychology perspective, as someone that finds what Tim does extremely valuable in the world, absolutely. Even if, even if he's not my personal cup of tea, I don't want Tim to fail. And I'm looking at this entire situation and I'm like, this is something that is going to end up collapsing in on itself if something doesn't change. Well, I can tell you one thing. If, like we said, if YouTube Alphabet were to, say, ban um, IRL, that would be the end for quite some time and you would have to rebalance and mm -hmm. uh, restart with a lot less people than you have right now. Yeah. You know, loving Think mama asks, well, and this is actually a question I got in locals too. So this is kind oh, of yeah. like, a, um, can you address? I the essentially ran room? away. Um, oh. I, I was getting really sad because of personal reasons. I had bought a vehicle that I was trying to fix. That was in another state um, near Fredericksburg, Virginia. And I had bought it and I had to buy all kinds of tools and specific parts for the thing. And it took me like three trips to go there and to, to fix it up and get it roadworthy to drive home. I mean, the brakes didn't even work. It didn't even start. Like one of the fuel tanks were bad, all kinds of stuff. And so 
I went two trips over span of time. And then at some point we get close to um, December. I mean, sorry, we get, yeah, to early December. And I just decided that I wanted to take a few days off and get that thing home because I wanted to drive the thing all the way back home. Mm -hmm. And then you eventually came back. How did you feel like that episode turned out? Uh, it was my fault. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't really have um, internet or phone service. I had texting and I kind of didn't want to be bothered. Mm -hmm. And I, at some point, and it was really hard. It's really hard to get messages to go through. It's like we were in a, uh, I was in a gated community where there had to be, um, well, the episode was amazing. Um, did amazing work with editing mm -hmm. and all that. I just, I didn't mean to hurt anyone. Yeah. Murph's Turf says, great stream. This is humanized Lydia and Tim. I hope Adam and Tim heal and can resolve their issues in time. Tim needs a friend like Adam. I yeah, agree with this. I think that like, I think that Tim, never too um, late. <laughs> I think that Tim underestimates how much Adam cares about him. And yeah, I think, I, you know, I mean, the reason that Adam, I think, held on to this for two years is because he desperately <laughs> wants to be, be Tim's friend. Like, and I Tim wants to be it. Adam's friend. Uh, it doesn't look like that when he makes a response tweet, uh, right. uh, stream and he, he does make lies. Not that many, but, you know, I'm going to watch it after this. <laughs> he definitely lied, but I think that, I like, you know, <laughs> what, I, what I see with Tim and Adam, and tell me if you agree, is um, I see two people <clears> that yeah. do care about they each other on some level. Road. And something has happened, and it's in, and maybe. Very stressful. And, and you both. know. Both of them want to be. He waited. Adam did the right thing and waited until Liddy was gone and has right. a private life and could go and live her life. And yeah, I don't think he really wanted to hurt Lydia as much as he did. And I think I don't think Lydia wanted to hurt him as much as she did, as it's claimed, you know. I but mean, it I was very nasty and it's still ongoing. And they kind of need to start maybe thinking about maybe some stuff that they tweeted and why not delete it or. Or just don't make any more of it. So I, I think a lot that. of she was super. She was super nice to me. Yeah, extremely nice. I feel like a lot of this. But not is, to everyone. I feel like a lot of this is folly to a certain yeah. extent. It's like it's it, it's a bunch of socially awkward people. Yeah. That in a are, frat house. It was a frat a, house. In a frat house that where 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 tim is kind of getting paranoid and and a little for real reasons what's going on for real reasons we're not yes. we're not dismissing that he has my cause, job is part of that but he's directing the paranoia towards people who he has brought yeah. in to help him and it's not allowing him to run an effective business enterprise yeah yeah a brand it's really a brand mm -hmm. but it's so much more than that it was going to be a technology company tim agreed with um well, let's just see someone who's on Adam Krigler's show that they were going to go and build an amazing thing together, and it just didn't work out. Well, so it could have been really interesting. To be quite blunt, Tim is not going to be able to build anything that's sustainable if he well, keeps he's, he's going to keep behaving like this. He, yeah, he's he's really going not going around it's, not, it's not going. It's not going to work. You know. I can't believe. So. And I think it's really sad. I think I think there's just so much potential in what he's doing, and I think it's just really sad. Um, Jenny's getting getting inky with it. Says, did you feel your talents were being used to their utmost? Um, the, how did you feel about that? Mine weren't, but I was only there to help Tim get his technological um, assets built, so that when I transitioned my duties to another person. There would be no questions as, as to like what is the um, what is the security or the the design characteristics of the system, and it would just be a functioning machine. And he would only have to essentially hire people with like college level experience or interns in the computing profession, people he could source locally from D.C. or West Virginia or the area and he wouldn't have to bring in someone like super crazy skilled. Mm -hmm. Although he would have to, have, let me tell you something. He would have to have a CTO at the top of that thing to help those people do their jobs so that all of his infrastructure and his technology is working. And um, I'm just, I'm sorry, like Tim, that I couldn't be that person. I, you know, we talked about that. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, that's I, I could only give you a year. <laughs> 
but not everyone is suited for every job. And again, yeah. this is this is something that Tim needs to learn about, like just a hiring practice. You can't just hire people because they're friends or friends of right. friends and not give them any direction and then expect them to be competent. Yeah. Or expect your girlfriend job. to do it all. Or expect your girlfriend to do and it she's all. She's really work. well trained and stuff, but she's and, she's amazing. Yeah. But exactly. What advice would this, you? Yeah. If, if, if Tim watches this, and I strongly doubt he will, but like if let's someone just say else he will. does, <laughs> someone else will. Maybe two what, people. What what advice would you give to Tim about like what what changes would you want to have him make? Don't look back. Figure out what you need in terms of real advice, real business acumen, people who have done this before and know how to grow companies. And hire a coach, hire a professional CEO coach to help you get some policies, some procedures, things in place so that it streamlines your life. And it makes it so you can actually live a life outside of just broadcasting yourself. And you can actually spend some time with your girlfriend. And like it was in the beginning before you had, you know, half of, you know, this many people. Yeah. Yeah. So he, do do you have an NDA? He needs to take a sip. I do have an NDA. <laughs> yes. Are you worried about that at all? I'm not worried about it. Um, I think there can be a separation between business information and personal information and stuff that, regardless of what I do did here today or do in the future, um, I don't think I could have stopped Adam from doing that. I think that. Now that I'm done that, it's like, well, we can either let Adam's testimony stand on its own and have people call him a liar and say, well, you don't have any proof and all this stuff. Or we can say, well, what's what's really the, the bigger situation here? And and how can we help both Adam and Tim evolve to be their best selves and no longer have this thing where they can never talk to each other and he has to do whatnot with <laughs> You know, someone's wife. <laughs> you know, I mean, I like I. It sucks, I think but, yeah. I think that you're There's still in, both. Um, yeah, I think you, that your intentions have been really, really honorable with this, and I hope that Tim sees that. And whoever watches this sees that. He befriended me. And I think that there is, you know, there, there. From my and again, this is like a professional yeah. opinion. I agree with you wholeheartedly. Tim needs to hire an executive coach, and he needs. Yeah, to and he, he does need coach. management structure of people who yeah. have qualified. They don't have to have MBAs, but I'm just saying have people no, that don't. have actual education to help run departments in your business. And then on top of that, keep doing what you're doing, which is, mm -hmm. you know, um, bringing the most valuable people that you meet through Internet and social networks into your company. But make sure you have a structure on top of people who are really professional, really need to understand the brass tacks and they know how to get things done and to keep the, the ship sailing ahead and on course. Yeah, that's what you need to do. The first thing you need to do is get a coach. I, it's worth I, the money. It is absolutely worth yes. the money. We have one in my company. It is. It is going to bring transform Tim, him. Well, the, the, key, to the, him the, key, the key. The key to it is though is Tim needs to get a real coach, not yeah. a friend, not a exactly friend of a not friend. right. He not anyone. To... Anyone referred unless he knows no. the person referring is absolutely has his back and would you know go to the end of earth with him because he, he needs. You don't want to get someone a, in your company that's. I, I see, not call it not really who they say they are. Right. And I see people saying? mention I, I see people mentioning Jocko in the chat. Not Jocko, no content no. creators. Tim needs a real fucking coach that does not want to be famous on the internet. Yes. That, someone that who is a private person. One. He comes one yeah. day a week, a month, or two days a month. He coaches Tim. Tim tells it's almost like a therapist role, role as well. But they're professionals yeah. who are they have the sole role of taking you from where you are now to a billion dollar business. That's their sole goal. And they will also be your friends through the whole process. And you need to bring someone like that into your life. And even if you don't actually have them come out to the castle yet or to West Virginia, you want to be talking to people who are actual professional business and CEO coaches. Mm -hmm. And you want to start finding the one you like that you also have good personality dynamic with. Yeah. And, and get along and with really well because they're going to train you hard. It's like going through boot camp. I'll tell really you, exa is. I'll tell you yeah. exactly what Tim needs. Tim needs to talk to someone who mm -hmm. he can trust 
to be vulnerable with. He yes. needs to have real conversations with this person. And they also have to Secrets. have a business acumen. Yeah, he needs to be able to talk about the struggles that he's having with the security. I think that yeah. this is this is a problem that, that Tim is not the first person in the world to experience this problem. There right. are there are many, many Most people in the world who has. Right he needs to he needs to find someone that can explain to him how people tackle this problem. And he Yeah, how has it been done before in other organizations there now? Right massively successful and everyone knows their names and their brands because it's been he, done those coaches yeah. were in those other companies that you admire you might have not seen them but they were there they were there behind the shadows they, they're, they're, they were talking to the ceo yeah. of like vice news or cnn well a lot you know. of exactly ted turner exactly. you should read his book by the way read ted turner's um, maybe uh, i book. maybe maybe i will he went no, to therapy no i mean tim, tim should <laughs> Tim needs to go. Well, Tim probably should go to therapy, but I think that the, that the biggest yeah. thing is that Tim has got to stop. It ain't as easy as it looks. That's well, for sure. No, it's not. But Tim has got to stop taking out his personally yeah. his issues Personal on stuff. on his employees. That yeah. that has got to stop. He's got to stop firing people over stupid shit. He's got to start. If someone makes a mistake, there's got to be a process of explaining to that person what the mistake was and an expectation set to don't do this again or else here will be the consequences. Yeah. Just, let them know what hire people like willing. Let them know the bounds. Don't exactly. have it be where they can't even see I once what's had going a, to happen. I once had a client I was coaching that said, Carlin, I really like having guardrails. I like being no, I like knowing right. when I'm it's doing like, things well yeah. and I like knowing when I'm not. It's like skating. Well. When, when you're skating down a, um, what do they call those things? The grind rails when you go down the oh, steps. Oh, I have no idea. Well, I've never you only, in my life. <laughs> yeah. Well, you you know exactly what target you have to hit for the board to go all the way down. Mm -hmm. And if you miss it, you're going to fall on your face and you're going to get really hurt. Right. So you have to have the process in place so you know exactly where you land on the board. Yeah. So so he needs he needs to do he needs to to hire someone that's going to help him build this and also have someone that he can yeah. talk to and has his to, back and their and actual he, friend and he needs not not as a friend not yeah. as a friend this is this is a mistake that a lot of people make and I want to make sure Russia, people really Russia. understand this because yeah. it's you're like, an expert in this you part. yeah because no 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 it's okay um yeah. so so when you're hiring a coach you need to be able to hire someone that's going to tell you the thing that you don't want to hear because yeah. Tim, and exactly Tim, that's what Tim, says and it's and like Tim needs camp. to. Personal Tim trainers to, for the business. Exactly. And Tim needs to listen to the person that he hires. Yeah. There's a lot of changes that Their need to be made. Their advice is in sound. It's scientific to, information. It well, it is. I mean, I I, I hope he I hope he uh, I hope he takes I took it. a lot of management courses. I don't know. You're yeah. <laughs> no, but Tim needs to hire someone that's gonna help him do that, that he can talk to. He needs to listen to that person. He needs to make time for that yes. person you need I to set like four hours a week well every it time it it, how for frequently it doesn't need to be four hours a week but um yeah. he he does need to he does need to take time to do it he needs to stop running yeah. from thing to thing to thing to actually Focus be able to on dedicate de dedicated to focusing yeah. on that it doesn't need to be that way forever but it does need to be that way for a period of time until the blow-ups stop happening with the employees that like there there are any number of ways that tim can take his frustration or or his anxiety or his annoyance out. Um, it's it, but he's got to yeah. stop blowing up at his employees. You should go to the gun range sometime too. <laughs> go to the gun range. Perfect idea. You got all that stuff. Just use it. That. Live like an American. You have, you know, why was you still have freedom? Hopefully, we still have freedom in twenty twenty four. But let's... he should absolutely do enjoy that. yourself. Live your life. But. You know? What are what are some kind of like like I, I kind of want to start wrapping it up because we're getting mm. to two hours. It starts to yeah, go silly yeah. after two hours. Is my experience. What are some other thoughts that you have about this situation that you would like to to express? I would really really like Tim to just call Adam directly. Mm -hmm. It's the main thing. I think Tim also yeah. needs to apologize to Nishra as well as Adam. And I think after that, anything else that happens is really between Tim and Allison and. They are a super loving couple, and I think they can get through this. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but I think don't that... throw Adam under the bus anymore. Like, just yeah. let that go. Adam, don't throw Tim under the bus for not calling. He didn't know how. He literally doesn't know how. Like, he can't process right. how to do that. Right. I think that everyone in this situation that I've spoken to, again, really wants Tim to be successful. Yes, and Adam as well. Go and subscribe yeah. to both if you yeah. like their content.
and and they're but but like this whole thing is going to implode if he does not make changes it's just like i i cannot see any way around it and that's why i wanted to talk to you and wanted to air this publicly because tim ain't never going to talk to me that's not that's not going to happen in any universe but but at least maybe this can get his attention and i think that um i think your intentions are honorable i think you're trying to do the right thing um and you know i really do appreciate you uh telling your story thank you carolyn yeah yeah anything else you want to say for today oh thank you i (laughs) appreciate appreciate you absolutely you are one of the most amazing people i've met in my life well at least in the last seven years (laughs) 10 years 11 and all the people who have tuned into here um thank you so much and have a nice night all right Thank you, Ben. I'm gonna I'm gonna pull you off the screen yeah. and talk no, a little bit. You can keep going. We'll um, you're gonna do another show right after this. I don't know yet. I have to. I have okay. to take a break. I have to take. I, yeah. Well, I was be, thinking of. Gonna I'm gonna watch. Involved. I'm gonna enjoy that. You should. If we, if we do the if we do the comedy. quite interesting. Screen, oh my god! Yeah. I still need to recover, <laughs> but I need to go and take a break and decompress a little MJ. bit, and then we'll decide yeah. what we're gonna do with Kanye. But I'm gonna I'm gonna it's pull you off the screen, and I'm gonna talk to people a little bit to wrap up, and then we'll debrief afterwards. And get some new whiskey. You can yes. let that go. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, man. I really right. appreciate you being here. It's nice right. being here. Yeah. All right, guys. That was that was Ben. I hope you enjoyed the conversation. Um, I just want to do a little bit of a, a wrap up to kind of put some of my thoughts around it. And again, I've been speaking to Ben for a little while now about this behind the scenes. And um, I really, I, I'm glad that this conversation went the way it did because I really wanted to, I really wanted people to hear that this is not about destroying Tim. You know, I, I really like, this is not about going after him. This is, this is something that is a very serious thing for me. And, um, I, I, I like people having a positive work environment does really mean a lot to me. And I really hope that Tim or someone's in Tim's life watches this today and listens to some of the things that are said and takes it as the constructive criticism that it was meant as because I want Tim to be successful. I want him to be successful. But I meant what I said on the stream in that if he doesn't stop treating his team the way he's treating them, he's not going to be able to be successful it's not going to work. It's going to implode. He's not going to be able to keep people around. He's not going to be able to hire good people. He's not going to be able to have those people be as productive as they need them to be. And the thing that I find most, um, you know, like a little bit frustrating, if I'm honest, is that Tim has everything around him that he needs. Tim has all the money he needs to fix this problem. Money is not the thing that um, that is required to fix it. Tim has people around him who love him. I've spoken to so many other people involved in this situation that that they genuinely loved him and they don't they don't understand why you know he's suddenly blowing up at them and like firing people over over stupid stuff or blowing up at people over his socks or like moving stuff in the fridge or like all of this other stuff and it's just it's unnecessary it really is it's unnecessary and um tim is going to be a lot more successful if he hires an executive coach And he starts making time for that executive coach, not one of his friends, not a content creator, not someone that's like public on the internet. He talks to them and he works with them to figure out how to be the executive that can build a multi-million dollar empire and manage his team. And he's got to find another way to, to work out his frustration because taking it out on your employees is not okay. If someone makes a mistake, And this happens all the time in workplaces. If someone makes a mistake in something that they have not been trained to do, you say, okay, this is not what I want done. Here's what I want you to do. Here's what I don't want you to do. And and please do it this way in the future. You have to put processes in place where people can be held accountable. And people can't be afraid of being fired all the time. And I think this is one of the biggest things that that Tim really needs to hear is you cannot run a team where people are afraid of being fired if you pick up or if they pick up your socks off the floor or look at someone the wrong way or text someone who is their friend like 
you you can't run a business like that. People are not going to be able to learn and grow in your business. You have to have some sort of management structure. And I know that Tim is probably going to be adverse to a management structure because he's doing this hippie commune type thing. And I appreciate it. There are unconventional ways to run businesses. It does. I'm not suggesting Tim needs to run like a formal corporation or anything. There are all sorts of unconventional ways to run businesses, but scaring the hell out of your staff and making them fear for their job all the time when quite frankly, they're thrilled to be there and they want to work for you and they want to help you. It's not going to work. So it is my hope that this is viewed productively by people. I think that Ben came to me in a productive way. He didn't come to me in a, I want to shit on Tim way. And I don't think there was any part of this stream that was shitting on Tim. I think that everyone involved in this, to include, by the way, Lisa in the chat, Lisa, Tim's sister, who they want, everyone wants him to be successful. But Tim has got to look inside himself and he's got to make some changes in order to, to, to seriously, in order to, to make that happen. So I hope that this stream today maybe is a little bit of a wake up call. That's what I would want to see it as. Um, I hope you guys were able to get a little bit more insight without really getting into like personal business information. We really tried hard not to, not to, not to share things that should not frankly be shared publicly. I don't, I didn't want this to be a complete airing of, of all private information ever, but more so playing on the information that's already publicly out there and answering questions people had. I think that that was important. So I want to thank everyone for joining me here today. I really do appreciate it. I hope that you mount that like button for me on the way out the door. I hope you consider subscribing to the channel if you have not already. And I hope you consider um, becoming a member of my community. We got a couple of things coming up this week. Again, uh, just in case you, you like non-controversial things. I do have a Unabomber book club that is meeting on Sunday. I'm really excited. We're reading the Unabomber Manifesto. There is uh, there is plenty of time for you guys to get the Unabomber Manifesto, read it, come and join us in the community. You can join through my locals or through my Patreon. You can find links to both at activelyunwoke.com slash support. You can also find them in the description below. We're going to be discussing that on 3 p.m. on Saturday. And then on Sunday, we're having movie night. We're watching Fahrenheit 451 in my supporter discord on Sunday at 8 p.m. If you've never seen it, it's a great flick. We're watching the original, not the remake. We do movie night on a weekly basis in my supporter discord. And you get access to that by becoming a member of my channel or by my support, again, my locals or my Patreon or all that stuff. I will be back streaming tomorrow at 5 p.m., but not on my main channel. We'll be on youtube.com slash active, actively unwoke. This is my second channel. Link in the description below. And we'll be doing happy hour at 5 p.m., which is we watch a woke training from start to finish um, and we talk about it. And I might, might, though I cannot guarantee, I have to see if I can set it up. I might later tonight, maybe in an hour or two, um, watch that epic Kanye interview. Now, I don't know if I'm going to get kicked off of YouTube for watching, watching, uh, that, that God, if, if you guys saw that interview, I saw like, I think half of the interview that Kanye West did on Alex Jones today. And it was like, it was a tour de force. You didn't know what was coming. You didn't know what he was going to say. And if you haven't seen it, I may be watching it live at some point tonight. So you can relive the craziness with me. If you so choose, we'll watch it. We will have some laughs. I'll do some knitting and we'll hang out. And oh my God, what a stream that would be. So stay tuned to the channel. I'm not guaranteeing anything. So I got to go take a little bit of a break and go do some stuff, but I might be back maybe like nine o'clock, something like that. If I'm going to do it, it might be around 9 PM, but guys, please subscribe to the channel. If you have not already mount that like button on your way out the door, Brian says, consider this with the Jocko comment I made earlier. Yes, he's a content creator, but in Tim's mind, he may be the only vector available to humble him. No. It cannot be him. I understand your positive intentions here. I really, really do. But in terms of effectiveness, it can't be him. It just can't be for all sorts of reasons that I don't want to get into today. And it has nothing to do with him. I think he's great. I really do. I think that he's great. Um, I think he's really smart. I think he has lots of great leadership advice. I absolutely think Tim should listen to him. But Tim needs someone that he can confide in. He needs someone that isn't going to that he can trust not to run out into the public to spill his secrets. 
He really does. He needs someone that he can trust on a very organic level, someone that's been doing this for a long time. Um, I do think he needs to hire a man. I don't think it should be a woman. Um, some people are saying like me in the chat and I helped him clean up this mess. Tim is never going to ask me for that. And that's okay. I don't think Tim would work well with me anyway. I think he needs to hire a man that is older than him, that has executive experience, that knows how to coach people, that understands people management, that understands interpersonal issues, and that most importantly of all, is not a public person. Because Tim needs to trust that the person is not going to run onto the internet and spill his secrets. He like it is very clear to me that he has trust issues and I just don't think it's going to work if he if he has a public person. So, those are my reasons for saying I don't think it uh it can be Jocko. Um, although I do think that Tim should listen to some of the things that he has to say, cause I think he's really smart. Um, Nick says a thousand people currently watching. Well, not anymore, but we had a great audience today and I'm really excited. And remember guys to also support Lisa and Lisa, um, got, you can follow Lisa. I have her, uh, her channels linked below. I also have her cash app below. Um, this is her TikTok. If you want to follow her there, that's Tim's sister. She also made a video about this situation. And again, I do think that Lisa also had really good intentions. She and I have talked privately about it. I think that, again, I really I just, I know how these videos come across. I don't have any other way to get Tim's attention other than this. And I really just hope that people take it with what it was meant to be, which is constructive, and that he takes the advice and he does something with it and he builds a successful business that changes the world, that does everything he wants it to do so that he can make a boat ton of money and then retire and do whatever he wants. So that's how I feel about it, guys. All right, I'm going to go take a little bit of, bit of a break. Watch the channel. We may be doing Kanye stream later. Um, take care, guys, and we'll see you soon. Have a great rest of your evening, and we'll see you in a couple hours.